Three hours of the very best entitled people stories from this year, starting with this absolutely crazy entitled aunt. Aunt shows up at my house with all her stuff and tells me she's going to be living with me for a while. So without getting too political, we recently had an election in the USA. My aunt supported one side while her husband and offspring supported the other side. The election did not go the way my aunt wanted it to. She proceeded to flip her nuts, breaking things, yelling, and even going as far as to set her daughter's I voted sticker on fire. Her husband called the cops. The cops declined to arrest her for anything, but suggested that she find a different place to stay for the night. This happened yesterday in New Jersey. Fast forward to 2 a.m. today. Here I am sleeping peacefully in my home with my family over five 500 miles from all that drama my fence alarm goes off waking me up I don't know if it's a bear or a trespasser So I get my pants on grab my shotgun just to be safe It turns out that my aunt cut the lock off my front gate because she couldn't get in and I wasn't answering my phone Why does she have bolt cutters in her car? So I safely stow my weapon and ask her what the frick she starts crying and screaming Mind you this is 2 a.m. In a quiet rural community about how the devil took my family and threw me out and she says that since she has nowhere else to go i need to let her in so she can stay in my guest room for a while i told her that one of my guildies is using that room right now the room is occupied this person came from texas all the way to west virginia to hang out with me i'm not going to toss them out with 30 seconds notice because my aunt showed up so she decides to call the police and tell them that i'm keeping her from entering her home we're out in the woods so the cops don't get here quick 4 41 a.m the cops show up I see them talking to her in my driveway. She shows them the bolt cutters and the ruined lock. A few minutes later, the officer knocks on my door. Your tenant claims that I immediately cut him off and tell him that I do not have a tenant. I own and occupy the structure. I offer to show him the deed. Well, this woman claims that I cut him off again. What does the address on her ID say? At this point, the cop is fuming at me. I can tell. So I try to de-escalate the situation. Look, man, she doesn't live here. She's never lived here. That's my aunt. She lives in New Jersey. Please check her ID card. The cop calms down a bit and lets me know that he will talk to her and then come back. Roughly 10 minutes later, the cops come back to my door. Three of them this time, not just the one from earlier. One of them had stripes and a rocket on his arm so I could tell he was important. He asked me if there's any way my aunt can stay here for the night because she's too drunk to drive so we can't let her back on the road. This woman just drove from New Jersey to West Virginia drunk. Thank God she didn't kill anyone. I told them she cannot stay here but that I'm sure there's room in the local jail the cop asked me if she can just sleep in her car in my driveway and leave in the morning and i told him absolutely not when she wakes up in the morning i would just have to call them to come and get her off my property so that would solve nothing i asked him to remove her from my property long story short her car got towed and she's in the drunk tank no charges pending for the night so much for sleeping tonight my kids need to be up for school soon okay what a mental way to start this episode but the thing that springs to mind is surely they should have just arrested her anyway for drunk driving i guess there's no actual evidence but i reckon if you asked her she'd probably just admit it she's that drunk that's so dangerous the other stuff yeah is very entitled but the fact that she's driven from new jersey to west virginia that drunk arrest her entitled parent calls the cops because i'm too skinny So for some background, I'm a 16 year old male and I have a high metabolism. Now for everything I eat, I really don't gain that much weight. So I'm pretty skinny, 107 pounds. Now for those of you like me that uh, don't work in pounds, that is under 50 kilograms, about 48 and a half kilograms. So yeah, that is pretty light. This happened about two days ago. I live in a big city and my family and I don't go out to eat often because of COVID. But since everything is starting to calm down, we decided to go out and eat. As we were ordering, I see a lady with a Karen haircut. I joked to my brother, who's 19 years old, and we had a good old laugh. Little did we know, though, it was actually a Karen. Enter the entitlements. What do you mean you're out of chicken? One of the staff members dealing with this Karen said, I'm sorry, mom. The delivery hasn't come in yet. I don't care. I deserve this chicken right now. Give it to me or I'll call your manager and get you fired. Again, sorry, mom. The delivery will be here in three to four hours. I really can't control that. The entitled parent, still fuming, went off to the side and we ordered. I order and that's when the entitled mum went off on me. What the F kid? Why are you so skinny? Do you ever eat? Uh, I I eat a lot, but I have a high metabolism, mum. I don't care. You need to eat more and gain weight. Uh, I don't care. Again, I eat a lot. I just don't gain that much weight. My brother then intervenes. Mum, leave my brother alone. He's telling the truth. 
Who the F do you think you are talking to me like that? I think I'm myself telling you to leave my brother alone. Oh, yeah? Well, shut your freaking mouth, you dog. I'm calling the cops on you and your parents for starving this young boy. 50 minutes later, the cops arrived and asked what had happened. They took the entitled parent off to the side first, and she claimed that my brother tried to assault her and that he kidnapped me and was starving me. Then they took my side of the story, and I said that she's an old crazy bat because I was here with my brother and we're just trying to get some food to bring home for my family. I then explained my high metabolism and that my brother didn't even attempt to assault her, and that if they wanted to check, they could ask the worker or just check the camera. So they asked the worker and checked the cameras. When they told the entitled parrot that there wasn't a problem, she went ballistic. She actually ended up kicking one of the officers in the privates. She got arrested for assault of an officer and we pressed charges for harassment. We're still waiting for the court dates. I mean, seriously, lady, I know 48 and a half kilograms or 107 pounds. That is genuinely very light for a 16 year old boy. There's no getting away from that. But still, some people do just have crazy high metabolisms and some people just like being skinny. Like, who knows? The guy might have been a runner, might have been crazy into his fitness. He's not necessarily malnourished just because he's lighter than you might think a typical 16 year old boy would be. Also, it's just none of your business at all, really. I mean, you've gone to enjoy a meal. You sit there, enjoy your meal. Let OP and his brother enjoy theirs. Everyone's good. If you really care that much, you can have a look at their table and see how much OP's eating. But it's none of your business. Again, leave it alone. Now moving on to our next story. This one is taken from r slash entitled people. Woman demands to know tragic backstory. This happened a couple of years back, but I still cringe when I remember it. Throughout my teens and early adulthood, I had it pretty rough. My mental health was not the greatest, and as a result of bad coping strategies, I have severe scarring throughout my body, most noticeably on my left arm. Due to the extent of the damage, literally hundreds of keloids, most people assume I was in an accident and have the good sense to avoid the topic. It's no secret to my friends, but it's not exactly something I'd like to discuss with strangers. And by the way, those of you that may not know, I didn't either. Keloids are a type of ray scar. They occur where the skin is healed after an injury. Okay, so that makes sense. Probably quite a noticeable, you know, ailment, I guess. A good friend of mine wanted to go shopping for clothes and asked me to tag along to keep her company. I think we were both in our early 20s at the time and I still had severe social anxiety. We were having a good time, but while she was in the changing room, I wandered off by myself to browse. A little kid comes up to me and asks what happened to my arm. Now, kids are curious, that's fine, but I'm not able to disclose the truth though, as I feel it's A, highly inappropriate, and B, quite uncomfortable. So I tell him I'm not really comfortable saying, and immediately start rifling through shirts to appear busy. The kid goes away and comes back, teary-eyed, with mum in tow. She demands I explain to her child exactly what happened to my arm as they are curious. The following conversation takes place. No, mum, I don't really feel comfortable talking about it. Please respect that. But my kid wants to know. That's all well and good, but I'm entitled to my privacy. What I understand is you're a rude, selfish, little... What followed was a veritable verbal battering as the woman got increasingly agitated and took turns calling me impolite and demanding answers. It escalated to her grabbing my arm and telling her kid to touch it as much as they wanted. At that point, I, already on the verge of a panic attack, started to freak out. I practically screamed at her. It doesn't matter whether I was a lion tamer or kidnapped by pirates. You don't get to know my life story just because you want to. My friend came back about then, having heard the commotion. She is a petite, soft-spoken creature, and I can count on one hand the number of times I've heard her raise her voice in the 30-plus years we've known each other, and I still have fingers left. She descended on these two like an avenging Valkyrie, and with language that would make a sailor blush, gave such a thorough verbal lashing, the lady was rendered momentarily speechless. We took the opportunity to leave and could hear her shouting about rude kids on the way out. I was a bit shaken up at the time, but to this day, we laugh about how bad of a lion tamer I must be. I hope for the kids' sake, their mum learned some chill though. 
Although that story didn't really involve much harm or violence or anything of that sort of ilk, it did involve one of the most entitled people that I can remember in my recent time of reading out stories. Genuinely, to go up to somebody and say, what happened to your arm? Then to say, you know what? I don't really want to tell you. I'm not really comfortable telling that sort of stuff to strangers. I kind of keep that between me and my family and my friends. And then to say, no, I don't care. Tell me. That's another level of entitlement. Genuinely, just thinking about that. That is... Mental and then trying to you know go off and say oh these kids these days are so rude not telling me what serious thing happened to them That's the reason they've got loads of scars on their body like what? What are you on about? What sort of example are you setting to your kid? That is a, a madness. Seriously, that is a crazy, crazy story. And now moving on to our final story of today's episode. Why would she work here if she's just going to act disabled? So, for some context, I have a lot of mental issues tied with anxiety and pressure. When I get too overstimulated, I start to twitch, stutter, say intrusive thoughts out loud, hum and shake. At the time of this story, I was working at a popular fast food place. Before I had started working, I informed my boss and my managers I'd be working with about this and got permission to listen to music during work since I worked the fry station. The orders on the fry station came up on a little screen and I didn't really have to communicate with anyone as long as I was fast enough to get the orders through before they needed to ask. Normally, I would work with a pair of Bluetooth earbuds in just loud enough to barely hear what was going on just in case i'd have to listen however these two girls i worked near would loudly talk about me assuming that i couldn't hear it was the normal stuff that i usually heard at work why does she get to listen to music and we don't she must be their favorites etc classic female dog stuff one day however i realized that i'd accidentally left my earbuds at home my manager that day was really sweet, but we were short staffed and I didn't want to ask to go home and grab them I also didn't have the guts to ask anyone if they had some I could borrow So I decided to toughen it up and work my shift without them being in the kitchen without music was loud And the two girls gossiping really didn't help. I started to shake and hum already However, since this was the first time they'd ever really gone to talk to me during work they jumped at the opportunity. We had a conversation that went something like this. The first female dog said to me, Hey, OP, can I ask a personal question? Shoots. What makes you so special that you can listen to music on earbuds, but we can't even play it out loud on our phones? I do fries and don't like talking. You don't do fries and do like talking. Then the second dog got involved. Are you saying we talk too much? No, I'm saying I don't like talking and I don't have to talk to you to do my job. I just think it's funny how you get to D sucking female dog. Excuse me? What did you just call her? Our manager then walks in and she's heard the last bit at this point. Don't mind her, she can't help it. But she's never done this before. Look at her. She's acting like this to get out of work early since she doesn't have her special needs music today. Guys, that's really uncalled for. I just say wet paints. We just want to know why she would work here if she's just going to act disabled. I'm a college student on my own. I need a job to get wet paint food. Then the second female dog asked me, Are you just, in Sir R word here, why don't you go on disability or something? At this point, my manager gets really mad and yells at them to stop. I'm breathing really heavy and I'm on the verge of a panic attack. So she takes me to the freezer in the back and has me a bag of liquid ice cream to squish. We've previously talked about how I enjoy the weird bag feeling and thought they were fun to hold. She also has a brother with similar problems to mine and knows that sensory stimulation is helpful to some. I don't know why squish squish ice cream bag is funny, but it is. She leaves and comes back a few minutes later and tells me that I can clock out for the night and not to worry about them. So I do. The next night i come back and the first female dog was put on a week long suspension and the second worker was fired as it was her final strike for causing workplace drama i mean once again i have no real issue with these two girls kind of you know asking the manager or asking uop how come you get to listen to your music whilst we don't because you know on a job i'd like to listen to music and if some of my co-workers were listening to music and i wasn't allowed to i probably want to know why so um that's completely fine but surely as soon as you like you know go to the manager and get an answer or ask op and they give you an answer 
You're like, well, okay, that makes complete sense. Fair enough. Um, you just get on with what you're doing and I'll leave you alone. You don't go and do all this like madness and start abusing them and ending up getting fired and getting suspended and that sort of stuff, which by the way, they fully deserve for being so abusive. Surely at that point, you just accept it. I don't know. I mean, let's put it this way. Would you rather have the issues that OP has and be able to listen to music at work? Or would you not be allowed to listen to music at work, but be completely fine? I mean, I'm not like being that deep about it. I know which one I'd rather have. <laughs> as long as OP is getting to do the work and is doing that okay, and is able to deal with that even through their issues, then listening to music is a great thing. And yeah, I wouldn't substitute being completely okay and not having mental issues for having mental issues and then being allowed to listen to music, if that makes sense. Opie's going through a lot right now. These two girls aren't. Let her be, surely. Entitled Dad nearly gets his daughter's arm torn to ribbons. For background, this happened last year while I was volunteering at a local zoo. I was heading to the lynx enclosure to feed them when I heard some commotion coming from where the caracals and servals were. For an idea on how the layout of the enclosures were designed, the medium-sized wildcats all each have a fence and a set of bars to separate them from the visitors with the fences on the outside as a way to signal people to avoid getting into scratching distance of the cats. I went there to check and there was a man, the entitled dad of this story, alongside a girl that looked to be around five or six who were both past the fence and the girl was sticking her arm inside the caracal enclosure. And one of the caracals was hissing and growling at them while a second one was sleeping on top of a cat tree-like structure that was built inside the enclosure. Hey, miss, please remove your arm from the cage, I say. The entitled dad replies. Why? She just wants to pet the kitties. Sir, these animals are wild and they're clearly not enjoying her presence. Well, she likes cats, so she'll enjoy them anyways. Look, these aren't domesticated house cats. There are wild cats and they're not used to humans. Miss, please step back now or you're gonna get hurt. After I raised my voice, the girl snapped her arm back and looked at me, crying. You will not threaten my daughter, the dad said. I'm not threatening her. I'm warning you that these cats are not suitable to be pets. A passerby intervened. She's right, you idiot. You're endangering your own child by letting her get this close with wild animals. I'm not endangering her. It's a cat. They like being pets. No, it's a caracal. They look like cats, but they're a completely different animal. You wouldn't let your daughter pet a bobcat, would you? Of course not. But this isn't a bobcat. It's like the same freaking thing, you idiot. There's a reason why these animals are behind cages and fences. Oh, F off. Daughter, you can pet that cat as much as you want. Don't listen to these idiots. At this point, the girl looks way too shaken from the conflict and doesn't want to pet the caracal anymore, thankfully. The man then stormed away with her while threatening to report me to my superiors, which he did. But thankfully, the zoo's obviously siding with me. And then I resumed the feeding schedule while the servals looked at me in your typical cat judgmental way after thanking the man that helped me stand up to the entitled dad. I've dealt with plenty of entitled people while working at the zoo. But holy F, I never thought I'd actually meet one that gets annoyed at me for not letting them touch a dangerous zoo animal. Yeah, I mean, that is just astonishing, really. Genuinely, like, what would his excuse have been had the caracal come over and actually bitten off his daughter's arm? Because let's be realistic. As OP says, they are completely wild animals. You're in a zoo. They're not trained. <laughs> They're in cages for a reason. What would he have done if the cat had just come over and said, you know what, screw this girl. I'm a wild animal. I'm going to eat her arm. You could have had no excuses, nothing to say, oh, you didn't warm me or anything. Just brainless. I, I just don't get it. Now moving on to our second post. Entitled mother does nothing when her kid lets his dog poop all over my lawn, gets a nasty surprise in her mailbox. This happened about a year and a half ago, before the whole COVID thing. I had moved into a new home a few months ago, and one of the reasons I especially liked this home was because of its nice lots and close parks. Anyways, one day a few months after I moved in, I noticed that there was a piece of dog poop on my front lawn. I looked around and I didn't see anyone walking their dog. Quite a few of my neighbors had dogs, and I figured one of them had forgotten to pick up after their dog. I got a plastic bag and threw the poop in the trash, and I thought nothing of it. Imagine my surprise when, two days later, there was another dog poop on my lawn. This time, I saw the entitled kid of our story down the street walking his dog. I wasn't sure it was him, and his mother seemed kind of nice, so I thought I'd see if it happened again. A few days later, I was about to leave the house when I saw the entitled kid with his dog again. 
dropping a steaming pile of poop onto my lawn. I took out my phone and recorded a video. And after I got back, I went to his house. His mum answered, Hello, miss. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting something, but I was just wondering if we could talk about your son and his dog. Of course. What's up? Well, I noticed your kid walking his dog outside my house and I saw that his dog um, pooped on my lawn and he never picked it up. He carries bags when he walks his dog and I'd appreciate it if you could ask him to pick up after his dog from now on. The entitled mum then switched into full entitlement mode. That's nonsense. My son would never do anything like that. Ask anyone. He's the most well-behaved child in this neighborhood. I'm sorry, miss. I'm not saying your son is a bad child or anything. I just want him to pick up after his dog. I even have a video of him walking away after his dog pooped on my lawn. (laughs) Fine, I will talk to him. Now go away. She slammed the door in my face and I thought that would be the end of things. Boy, was I wrong. I didn't see the entitled kid walking his dog outside my house for a week or so after that. But around 10 days later, I saw another pile of poop on my lawn. I'd had enough now and I went back to the entitled mum's house. Miss, this is really unacceptable. You said you'd talk to your son and now there's another pile of poop on my lawn. That wasn't my son. He's an absolute angel. He said he'd never do it again and he didn't. The kid then came to the door. Kid, did your dog poop on this man's lawn again? Obviously lying through his teeth, he said, No, never. Well, that should be enough for you. Now, don't come back again. I was having dinner at my new neighbor's house and the topic of the entitled mum came up. My neighbor told me that pretty much everyone hated this lady as she was always borrowing stuff and claiming she never took it, filling other people's trash cans instead of paying for a special pickup. You get the idea. I finally broke when her dog pooped. Not once, not twice, but three times on my lawn in the same day. I got an epic idea. This time, I used a plastic bag to pick up the poop, but instead of throwing it in the trash, I kept it out in my backyard. For the next week, I collected poop from the lawn like a scientist, bagging everyone. I'm sure if someone saw me, they would have thought I was crazy. After a week, I had around four bags of the entitled kid's dog's poop in my backyard. On Friday night, I went over to the mailbox of their house and absolutely caked it in their dog's poop. I got the sides, the top, the bottom. I completely covered the thing. The next day, I was treated to the sight of her husband hosing their mailbox off with a look of utter disgust on his face. After that, her kid mysteriously stopped walking his dog in front of my house. A nice little r slash entitled parents r slash petty revenge crossover there completely justified of course if you can't pick up after your dog to be quite frank you don't even deserve to own one it's just disgusting like there's a reason why it's the law in the vast majority of countries that i've ever been to anyway that you have to pick up after your dog and if you don't i know for sure in england this is the case you have to pay a pretty big fine if you are caught honestly go to the police next time this happens i mean clearly it's not going to happen again because of that fantastic revenge but if it ever does on the off chance go to the police in your area and let them know what's happening with the video footage honestly the entire family will have to pay a pretty big fine i'm pretty sure and it will be well well deserved and now moving on to our final story if you don't let me in my son's room i'm calling the police for some background i own a 32 unit facility that houses felons who have finished their sentences and need some help returning to society each unit houses two clients we do stuff like teach them computer skills and help them learn to cook put a resume stuff like that 6 a.m about two hours ago my night manager calls me and tells me there's a lady pounding on the front door insisting she needs to talk to whoever is in charge so i tell him to give her my number before i'm even off the phone with him she's calling me before i can even introduce myself she goes off accusing me of kidnapping her son this man is 34 years old and here 100 on his own free will and forcing him to work for me now he doesn't work for me he works at the recycling center then she goes into how as his mother she needs to see what kind of conditions he's living in but he refuses to let her visit according to her he would never refuse to see her unless he was under duress So what she needs, demands that I do, is to come to the facility and unlock his door so she can go in and look around. I told her that that's not going to happen. I'm not letting her into someone else's home. She is not a resident here. Her son is not the only person who lives in that space and I would need permission from both her son and his roommate to let her in. She has no right to be here. 
Now, please, get off of our property or we will have you trespassed. This caused her to shriek, how dare you, into the phone and tell me that if she isn't let into the room within 10 minutes, she was going to call the cops and have me charged with kidnapping. I tell her, go ahead, and I hang up. I wasn't at the facility, but from the security camera footage, it appears that when the cops that she had called showed up and she explained the situation to them, her son came to the door and told the cops he didn't want to see her and that we didn't kidnap him. She went into a rage and attacked her son, but he didn't get hurt. He just backed up and slammed the door. The cops took her away. I don't know what's going to happen to her, but dang, seeing that dude's mum, he didn't have a great start in life. Oh my god, yeah, you're so right, OP. No wonder he's a convicted felon. If you've got a mother like that, Jesus, you're up, you're up against it, aren't you? When you're born into this world and you've got a parent like that who's meant to be looking after you and teaching you how to, how to be and live your life and how to act. And it's someone like that. Yeah, there's no wonder that he ended up doing some criminal activity. The great news is, though, that he's obviously decided that he never wants to see this woman again for quite obvious reasons and is on the way back to rebuilding his life. He's in a really good place from now with good people like OP, and I wish him the best and um, I wish his mother the worst. Entitled man gets angry at my mum for not getting a suit for cheap and then tries to steal it. Hey, guys. My mum used to have a job as a manager of a suit tailor and she told me about a time when a very annoying man walked in expecting a suit for a way too low price. So one day my mum was on her break when she overheard someone yell, this freaking shop, unbelievable. She quickly ran over and in her professional voice said, I'm sorry, sir. What's the problem? You're telling me that this is 200 quid? Yes. What the F? It should only be 50. Sir, here at our store, we offer the finest business suits. So this is practically a bargain. That is BS. A freaking bargain? If you're upset with our prices, then you should go somewhere else to buy it or just rent one. No, this one's the closest shop to my house and it's still far away. I'm sorry, sir, but there's nothing we can do. I recommend you leave. I would not leave until I get a suit. Sir, leave now or we will call the police. All right, fine. Trashy shop. My mum thought she was dealing with a mildly insane customer, but what he did next was insane. He grabbed the 200 pound suit and made a run for it. Now, it's a good thing that there was a doorman watching the entire situation unfold. As soon as the thief tried to sprint out, he got tripped up by the doorman and gracefully fell over. He was knocked clean out. My mum didn't want to press charges against him, so now his reputation isn't that guy who got arrested for attempted robbery. Instead, now he has to live with the shame that he was tripped by a 55-year-old man after trying to steal a suit. I don't know about you guys, but I think 200 pounds is, yeah, it's expensive, but I think it's a pretty reasonable price for a really nice suit, you know, a top tier suit that you're only going to wear on special occasions. Not 50 pounds. I mean, 50 pounds is still a lot of money for a suit, kind of, but I mean, you wouldn't expect to get, you know, a nice designer suit for 50 pounds. That's just ludicrous. Then trying to steal it. Yeah, I mean, that's criminal. I, I really don't understand, OP, why you didn't press charges. That's what I would have done because, you know, it's not exactly pressing charges. It's more, you know, reporting something illegal where they were trying to steal a suit from your store. Seems obvious to me, but hey, you didn't. Your choice. Now, moving on to our next post. Entitled patient tried to lie to my boss about me, so I got her discharged from the hospital. I always listen to these stories on YouTube, and I never thought I would have a story to post here. But here I am. For context, I work in a hospital that specializes in elective surgeries. Therefore, a vast majority of the patients that come into my office are people willing to pay thousands of dollars out of pocket to fix physical but not life-threatening issues. My boss is considered the best in his field throughout the entire world, and it is particularly difficult to schedule an appointment with him unless it is months in advance. I received a phone call from this woman. Let's call her Entitled Jerk, and the conversation was as follows. Doctor's office, how can I help you? I need an appointment so I can schedule surgery, and I was told by the doctor through email to call to be scheduled next week. I'm confused. I'm sorry, I'm not too certain what you're referring to. 
the doctor's not going to be in office next week and their next availability for consultations is not until may what 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 are you talking about they told me in the email to call and schedule it and i'm a sitting judge so i need an appointment next week okay mom give me one moment while i look into this i put her on hold and walk into my supervisor's office and ask if my boss had sent word about a last minute patient being added on that i was just unaware about they say no but to ask if the patient can forward the email so we can confirm that it was the boss who said that this is a common practice in the office i work in as there are instances where the boss talks to a patient but forgets to inform the staff if we're overbooked for a day my supervisor has to open a specific time frame in order to schedule any last minute patients i then take her off hold i'm sorry mom but are you able to forward the email to me it doesn't seem that there's any record of you coming into our office for an earlier appointment i just need to confirm before i schedule for some reason this statement activates some secret emotional bomb in the back of this woman's brain and she immediately becomes more hostile no i will not i'm a sitting judge and you asking me this is extremely rude and unprofessional i spoke to the doctor through email are you actually doubting me right now well to be honest yes i can't believe this i need to have surgery on this date and you're gonna give it to me i'm a thousand percent over this woman at this point okay mom i'm gonna ask my boss to send me the email when he's out of the or so i'm unfortunately gonna have to get back to you about your appointment dates thank you and just as a word of advice watch your tone the next time you speak to me okay click a few hours later, my boss comes back to the office and tells me they have received an email from the entitled jerk, saying that I was rude and unprofessional to her, and that I was refusing services to her because I wanted to invade her privacy and she said no. Luckily, the whole time I was on the phone with this patient, my supervisor was in my office listening to the entire call on speakerphone. Otherwise, no one would have been able to confirm that I was not being unreasonable and rude to this patient. My boss goes on to explain that they never promised an earlier appointment to her in the first place, but to check with the office to be put on the wait list for an earlier date. Now, knowing that the entitled jerk is nothing but a miserable liar that throws tantrums when no one believes her, I asked my boss if it was really worth it keeping her as a patient, to which he said, well, no. While I was happy with this decision, because I don't have to deal with this woman anymore, I felt bad for any other physician that is going to have to deal with this lady in future. What I didn't know at this point was that my supervisor called patient advocacy, essentially an HR that handles awful patients, and they agreed that her behavior warranted her not to be accepted as a patient by any physician within the hospital. So now my boss, supervisor, and I have to call her tomorrow to inform the hospital's decision to discharge her. Honestly, karma is not something you should F with. The major issue that i've got with this woman and by the way there's nothing wrong with asking for an earlier appointment that's absolutely fine it's just when you feel like you're more entitled to an earlier appointment because of your position because of who you are than other people ultimately if there isn't an earlier appointment you know to give to you that means someone else has that appointment theoretically then i guess this woman is saying you know what promote my appointment make me have my surgery first and we'll just delay someone else even if they might need it way more than this woman that's the major issue that i've got with her anyway in this story i mean not to mention the fact that she completely lied about having emailed your boss clearly that just didn't happen and that was just her way of trying to get an earlier appointment as well as you know flexing about her job but um yeah the, the problem that i've got is that clearly in this situation if she was to get an earlier appointment if op and the doctor were gonna you know fold and say fine just come in early someone else would have to you know be sacrificed and that could be really dangerous who knows now moving on to our final story of today's entitled parents video karma hits entitled kevin i've heard that a kevin is the male version of a karen so that's what i'll be calling the main character of this story yeah, I'm not sure about that OP, to be honest, because I think a Kevin is is more of a, a person who just doesn't understand what is going on in the world, has no common sense, and makes truly awful, crazy decisions, but they don't mean it. They're, they're not an entitled person. I think Chad is a better name for a male Karen. I mean, to be fair, if you guys have seen my videos on r slash stories about Kevin, you'll know that Kevin's, the name that we give them anyway, are not entitled. They're just dumb. <laughs> But anyway, OP's called him Kevin. That's absolutely fine. Let's get into the story. I've worked retail management for over a decade, and I've dealt with my fair share of Karens and Kevins. But this one particular Kevin sticks out. The setting of this is a retail drugstore chain. He was always complaining about everything. 
Everything from a customer smoking in the parking lot to having to wait five seconds for the cashier to acknowledge him. He once called me a greedy businesswoman when I refused to sell him the display model for a fan. There were plenty of those fans in their boxes. The main problem was that he needed our pharmacy. He took a multitude of prescriptions and he had our state's version of Medicaid insurance. Medicaid is government funded insurance for the low income. Although it's free, it comes with a lot of restrictions and paperwork. One of the main restrictions was that it will only cover generic medications unless authorized by a doctor. To get this authorization, we faxed the doctor a TAR form. Kevin demanded we give him name brand, claiming the generics didn't work. Every time we explain to him that Medicaid doesn't cover name brand drugs. Every time we fax his doctor a TAR form and every time his doctor rejected it. His doctor even asked us to please stop faxing him. Kevin swore we were trying to kill him and that he was going to sue us. He would specifically mention how high his blood pressure was and that this stress was worsening his cancer. We politely told him to call his insurance and to please take his business to our competitor across the street. Our competitor asked us to please stop sending him over because he was banned from their store. Several times he did call the Medicaid offices and they confirmed that they would only cover generics. That calmed him down for a month, but then it was back to being a Kevin. After over a year of dealing with Kevin, his attitude finally cost him. To get your prescription, you can either come inside the store and get in line, or you can go through the drive-thru, similar to fast food. This particular day, Kevin was in the drive-thru getting his prescriptions. Then he started to demand bread, milk, eggs, and other groceries. We told him that the drive-thru is for prescriptions only, but he kept demanding that we get him his groceries because he's old and disabled. After five minutes of him refusing to leave the store, my manager comes up and asks if we get him his things, would he please leave? Kevin said yes. Then it pretty much turned into a hostage situation. Kevin made more demands. The manager had enough and just decided to call the police. I was going to say, it's very risky even giving Kevin one thing that he's not supposed to have because surely at that point he's going to just ask for way more like he did right here. What happened next depends on who you believe. According to the police, when Kevin refused to leave, he appeared to be having a heart attack, so they dragged him out of his car. According to Kevin, the police took his keys away so he couldn't drive. Whatever happened, Kevin was in the back of a police car and his car was parked in the middle of our drive through We called a towing company to please remove his car. Kevin was unable to pay the impound fee, so he lost the car and had to rely on friends and public transport to get him everywhere. The irony I see in all of this Kevin constantly complained about his blood pressure being too high. Maybe if he wasn't such a Kevin, his blood pressure might not have been so high and he'd still have his car. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear from this story that this Kevin just takes life way too seriously. I don't know if he's just that sort of person or whatever, but it doesn't really surprise me that someone like this has such a high blood pressure when they, you know, they just get so stressed about everything, make so many demands, put themselves in so many toxic situations. Like, I'm sorry, Kevin, but you're not really helping yourself, are you, pal? I mean, instantly at the start of the story when he's like, you know what? No, I don't want the normal medication that is covered under my insurance. I only want name brand stuff. Literally, it's the same medication Surely you, everyone knows this. It's the same medication, just with different packaging. Maybe, you know, it, it's a, got a little bit of a different covering on it. It might be a bit sweeter or something, easier to swallow. It doesn't matter. It's the same stuff. It has the same purpose and it does the same thing. I don't know why he cares so much. It's not going to change your life, Kevin. Just get what you're insured for for free. It's pretty simple. But no, he wanted to go above and beyond that. And um, then <laughs> the funny bit is when he started asking for groceries at a prescription drive through uh, That got me, not going to lie. Um, but hey, maybe Kevin, this is all part of his big plan to just get drive through food seems unreasonable though doesn't it uh yeah what a weird bloke i got a male karen a chad arrested i a 20 year old woman run a retail store with only one other person another 20 year old woman and some guy came in and cussed at her literally the first thing he said to her was f you i immediately took over and told the man somewhere in his 50s i think that we wouldn't help him if he was going to be swearing at us he made fun of me for telling him he couldn't swear and i just ignored him and gave him the solution to the problem he was coming in about i watched him run outside to his truck check his back seat multiple times now this is important to remember and after about 15 to 20 minutes he came back in he sat down and just glared at me my co-worker was helping someone else i asked him what he needed he said he'd tell me after our only other customer left 
I told him he could tell me now, but he stood up and said, I will leave when she leaves. I responded saying, listen, I've been nothing but pleasant with you your entire time of being here, and you've been incredibly hostile. I'm giving you two options. You can either talk to me right now so I can try to help you, or you can leave. Because at this point, what you're doing, sitting down and saying nothing, is loitering. He was fuming. He got right up in my face to intimidate me and gave me the most evil look I'd ever received. I stared right back at him. What's it gonna be? He broke eye contact and said, I'll leave. He walked out the door, but he didn't leave. He sat in the front of his truck and kept looking through our window at us, waiting for our only other customer to leave. I pointed this out to both my co-worker and the customer, an older woman. The older woman told me to call the cops immediately and that the man was not mentally sound. I was hesitant, but she was right. I called the cops, but in the meantime, the man kept checking his back seat over and over again. When the cops arrived, they said hi to me first and then went outside to speak to the man. After about five minutes, I saw Mr. Karen trying to fight the cops. One of the cops came in later and told me the situation. So, he's going to jail tonight. There was something in the backseat of his truck that he's going to jail for. He was actually a wanted man. Are you all good here? One of us can stay here if you don't feel safe. I told him we were fine. He had me write up a witness report. It really makes me wonder just what was in the back of this guy's truck. All right, then you lot, comment down below. What do you think exactly was in this guy's backseat? Most interesting slash, you know what? Funniest answer, funniest idea. I'll pin as the top comment in this video because, you know, I want to see the most ludicrous suggestion. What do you reckon someone would have in their backseat that they're so protective of for 15 to 20 minutes and then end up getting arrested over? I want to hear your funniest ideas. Let me know down below. Now for our second story, mum steals my tickets for her kid. This happened pre-COVID. I was at a Dave and Buster's with the husband for date nights. I'm playing one of those games where you shoot a coin down a slot and hope it results in pushing multiple other coins off the edge to get tickets. However, Dave and Buster's no longer gives tickets. You have to insert your game card when you're done playing to receive your ticket credits. I am the only one playing one of the machines. There are five other empty machines that others could sit and play at. All of a sudden, a woman is standing behind me and she says, Excuse me, but you've been playing this game a while and my son, who is probably about six years old, deserves a turn. Of course, I point out that there are five other identical games available, but that's not good enough for her. She says, I see you have well over 400 points on this game. It's clearly the lucky one. I try to stick it out, but she's breathing like a dragon behind me. So I decide to leave. It's not worth it. I'm not even halfway out of my chair before the little kid is trying to get into it. No kidding, we touch butts as I'm sliding over. The mum pushes me out the way, and I say, Excuse me, but I need to put in my car to get my tickets. The freaking dog, though, takes her son's card and shoves it in, looks at me, and says, Sorry, he's playing now, and they are his tickets. You are clearly too old to be here anyway. A child deserves them more. I was 24 years old at the time, and this is DMB. It caters to adults. It's not some friggin' Chuck E. Cheese. Shout out Chuck E. Cheese, by the way. I remember when I went to America when I was young, and we went there a couple of times. Unbelievable spot. Now, I'm not one to cause a scene, but I'd spent a lot of my credits on that game. Of course, I went to security and threw a fit. They went over to the woman and told her she needs to let others take their tickets before playing. But of course, she played dumb. In the end, they gave me twice as many ticket credits as I was supposed to get, but they also let her keep the one she stole, most likely to avoid a huge blow up. I just can't believe how arrogant some people are. Yeah, uh, to be honest, guys, I'm pretty sure that was his mum's intention the entire time. Um, It's pretty obvious, really, in my opinion. She was just going for the tickets. That was it. I think it's pretty clear that she just made up some absolute bull about, oh, you've been on it for so long. Uh, this clear the lucky arcade machine. There are other machines and, and one's not going to be more lucky than other ones, is it? I mean, let's be realistic. It was just a great play to try and get some tickets, steal some tickets and get her kids something nice that he didn't earn. Pretty good stuff. Um, it's a shame, you know, because she actually got her way in the end. Yes, OP got twice as many tickets, which is great, but Karen still stole. Not great. Now moving on to our third story. Double book seats with an entitled couple on a 12 hour flight. Oh my God, that sounds horrific. This happened back when I was a kid, but there are stories here that reminded me of it. The situation. We were on a flight from Miami to Bolivia as a family of five with three kids under 12. We're getting on the flight 
sat down when an entitled woman and her entitled husband come up to my row. I'm sitting there in the same row as my brother and sister. The woman says to us, excuse us, you're in our seats. Now me, my brother and my sister have all been well versed in child travel by this time. So we pull out our individual boarding passes and show her. We're also assigned these seats. The husband says, no, you're wrong. Let me see those. We don't give them over. My dad comes over to see why strangers are talking to us children. Excuse me, why are you talking to my kids? Or they're in our seats. Look. That's their assigned seats. They know how to read a boarding pass. By this time, we've attracted the attention of the flight attendant, who confirms that indeed, those seats have been double booked. The entitled woman and her husband are irate, demanding their assigned seats. The flight attendant leaves to go, see what I can do for you. This whole time, the entitled woman is making a big show of trying to store her bag in front of ours in the overhead bins and complaining loudly. The flight attendant returns and says, thank you so much for your patience. It was double booked, but it looks like we have enough seats in first class available for your party. If you could please follow me. The entitled woman and her entitled husband sigh, relieved that finally someone will see reason. The woman gathers her bag and as her husband steps forward, the flight attendant holds up her hand. No, sir, not you. If you three, looking at me, my brother and sister, will please join us up in first class, we'll make sure you're taken care of. Oh, the lemon sucking look on the entitled woman's face as we politely grabbed our bags and moved to the coziest laps of luxury our young selves had the fortune of lucking out on. I remember the meal making me have a headache, but the reclining seats, warm blankets and sleep marks sure helped with all that suffering. Now, before reading the story, guys, I thought there was nothing better than a free upgrade to business class or first class on a plane when you've only paid for economy class tickets. But I was clearly wrong. What's even better is when you get the free upgrade and someone else who thinks they're going to get the free upgrade doesn't and they're entitled, arrogant and just overall not very nice. And you pretty much get to spit in their face as you make your way up to the front of the plane. Incredible scenes. Wow, uh, just an an amazing story. And uh, yeah, well done to those kids for being polite because honestly, that's probably the reason why they got the seats and not the entitled couple. The flight attendant was probably like, you know what, we have three seats here. Either we could give two to this arrogant, horrible couple that are just picking on kids and being overall rude unnecessarily when I'm just trying to do my job, or we'll give it to the three nice, polite kids who were just sitting there being calm, you know, not causing a disturbance. I wonder which one I'm going to go for. Good stuff. Now moving on to our final story of today's episode, Karen and husband with no tickets demand to enter the gallery five minutes before closing. So I worked at an art gallery that was mostly for VIPs, but anyone could enter as long as they had tickets. It's a pretty strict gallery and we only allow online booking. We're always sold out, so it's almost impossible to buy physical tickets. For our last day, the timings were only up to 7 p.m., At quarter to seven, our manager told us that we cannot let people in anymore as we were already taking down some of the artwork that had been bought. We did still allow some of the people who had tickets in though. Now, mind you, before you get to the desk to scan your tickets, there would be ushers who would approach you and ask if you have tickets. In this case, the ushers were instructed to tell people that they cannot enter the gallery anymore. At around 6.50, 10 to seven, Karen and her annoying husband try to get inside. They talked to the ushers for at least five minutes and were very angry to hear that they were closing. By the way, they didn't even have tickets. The ushers just couldn't handle the Karen and her husband, so they sent them to the manager. What is this stupid system? Why aren't you letting us in? The manager responded, We're very sorry, but the gallery is only open to seven. We don't allow any more people in. Then why did your website say it's up to seven? said the husband. At this point, guys, it was already around 6.54 p.m. Yes, sir, we are only until 7. There are only five minutes until that, and even if I let you in, the guard just wouldn't let you in, to be honest. Then just tell them to let us in. You hired them, so you can tell them what to do. I'm also just staff here, sir. We were instructed that we cannot let people in anymore. Okay, listen here. Then why did you put on your website that it was until 7? You guys are giving us false information. This is bad service. We always go to restaurants before closing and they let us in every time. 
Listen here. Next time, if you're late to the movies and they don't let you win, then you'll know what we're feeling. And they both walk out. I just couldn't fathom how stupid and entitled some people can be. Like, who the heck doesn't understand what until seven means? Anyway, the manager was really chill the whole time. Good thing Karen and her husband walked out or else they get slammed on the floor by our guards, which would have been interesting to see. Well, uh, to be honest, after hearing that last line, I kind of wish they had, you know, put up more of a fight and said, you know what? No, we are coming in. We're we're before seven. I'm coming in to see some lovely art uh, just so we could have enjoyed them, you know, getting slammed to the ground because that would have been fun. You know, entitled people getting decked is what I personally live for. And I know a lot of you guys do, too. So, um, yeah. Oh, well, maybe next time they'll be a little bit more entitled and we'll see them get absolutely shoved on their faces. Brilliant stuff. My mother ruined my graduation party. This happened a few years ago, but I was browsing Reddit and thinking about my mum, so I thought I would post it. This story is about me, an 18-year-old female at the time, my dad and my mum. They've been divorced for a very long time. My senior year, I was taking dual courses in college, so I was not that excited about my high school graduation. My dad and stepmom decided that they were going to throw me a small graduation party to celebrate. It was very small. Only my grandma and siblings were invited. It was more like a barbecue, to be honest. But I had no idea it was happening because they wanted to surprise me. My father reached out to my mother and told her that they were going to have a small thing for me and that she was welcome to come. My mother, though, became outraged that I did not call and personally invite her. She called me one night and screamed at me for a solid hour. Here is part of the conversation. Hey, mum, what's up? Why didn't you invite me to your party? What party? Your graduation party. Don't act like you don't know. I'm not having a graduation party. I I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you lie to me. I know you're having a party and I want to know why you hate me so much. This is your graduation. I should be there. Mum, seriously, all I know about is the ceremony. And as far as I know, you've already been given an invitation. Fine, I won't come, but I just want you to know I care about you and it hurts to know you don't care about me. I was upset and went to go and talk to my dad about it. He said that he was sorry, but my stepmom and him were planning a surprise party. He invited her to be nice, but didn't think she would react like that. So it wasn't a surprise anymore, but I was happy for the thought. A few days later was the graduation ceremony. After the ceremony, I met up with everyone up front for pictures in my cap and gown. My mum had purposefully dragged mascara down her cheek to make it look like she'd been sobbing. I knew it was on purpose because not only did she have a waterproof mascara, but her makeup was perfect despite the little bit running down her face. We took pictures and she refused to smile in any of them. She made sure that every picture she was in, she frowned as hard as she could and scrunched up her face. She looked like a toddler having a tantrum. She decided to not even go to the party afterwards. She did, however, call me every 20 minutes to express how left out of my life she felt. It was not a large party. It was fun and I have many smiling pictures of my dad and me. I mean, goodness me, if you're going to call OP every 20 minutes, you might as well have gone to the party. You're pretty much there already, woman. What the heck? I mean, seriously, though, it's so embarrassing ruining someone else's, your own daughter's graduation just because you're a little bit unhappy at the situation. I mean, first of all, there's that frowning in pictures, dragging your mascara down your face, acting sad when you're not really, you're just trying to ruin someone's day. And secondly, then ruining the surprise when you know it's a surprise because OP's dad would almost definitely have told you it's a surprise. Why? Why are you going out of your way to just ruin your own child's day on a pretty important day for them? Graduation's a big thing. Come on, what are you doing? Seriously, woman. Now moving on to our next post. No, Karen, I won't let you take my steak. So last year was my mum's 60th birthday. With lockdown, we couldn't do a big party, but instead I did a social distance meal for her, my dad and me. She wanted a steak dinner with all the trimmings. I went down to the supermarket a few days beforehand. Said supermarket has these specially cut steaks in vacuum packs and a deal of three for 10 pounds. I was choosing steaks and noticed a woman close by doing the same and picking up several. I took my three, put them in my trolley and moved on. I went along, got the remainder of my list, then thought of getting wine. I moved away from my trolley whilst choosing. When I turned back, that customer from before was leaning over my trolley. Uh, hi, this is my trolley, you know? Oh, I know, I'm just taking one of your steaks. What? I chose those, you were there too. I I saw you pick some up. Right, but I got 14 and I need one more. Uh, I have three, you're not taking one of mine? 
I deliberately pulled my trolley away from her at this point. You have to. I need it for the multi deal. And I need it to feed three people. No. She's red in the face by now. I'll go and get the manager then. Go ahead. She runs off and I finish choosing my wine. Five minutes later, I'm waiting to get checked out when the lady comes over with the manager. She stood back with this smug look I could see through her mask while the manager came over. Mom, this lady says you stole one of her steaks. Is that true? No, I picked up three at the freezer and later on I found her leaning over my trolley and she said she'd take one. She said she needs it for the multi-deal. The manager sighed. (sighs) I knew it. She does this. I'm sorry to trouble you. Enjoy your day. You two, good luck with her. The manager sighed again and walked away. As I checked out, I saw him guiding her away from the till points. A few minutes later, I heard a security to the meat art announcement as I was leaving. The steaks were lovely, but not worth stealing from someone else's trolley. My god, 15 steaks? Who are you feeding? An entire village? Seriously, why get 15 for the multi deal? Why not just settle on, you know, 12? Let other people have a couple steaks as well? This guy is just getting three. I mean, seriously, you're stealing from his trolley when he has three and you have 14? What? Wow. Uh, wow, any of you ever bought over 14 steaks? I mean, even if you're like doing a barbecue for a lot of people, you wouldn't need that many steaks. You get burgers, sausages, other stuff as well, surely. Not 14 steaks. 15 steaks you wanted? Jesus! W- wow! Now moving on to our final story of today's episode. Karen insults my wedding ring to my face. First of all, some backstory. When I first met the man who became my husband, we were not well off. He moved across the country to come and live with me and had not a penny to his name He proposed to me without a ring, which I was perfectly okay with. It was incredibly romantic He actually popped the question spontaneously and it's still one of the happiest days of my life He promised me when he was better off financially He would buy any ring that I wanted a while after our engagement The day came where he surprised me by taking me to a jewelry store He had saved a $5,000 budget plus a little wigger room for some credit if needed. He told me to go nuts. It was so fun and romantic. I tried on dozens of rings, diamonds, platinum bands, lesser gemstones, etc. Then I saw a set of steel titanium rings. They were originally designed for the grooms, not for the brides, but I'd never been a big diamond fan and I preferred simple flat rings to mounted stones. I ended up falling in love with a super simple black titanium ring with angled grooves. It was gorgeous. It was exactly what I wanted. And best of all, they were cheap, less than $200. My husband liked them too, so much that we got him a matching band. We decided to use them as both the engagement ring and the actual wedding ring. We had to special order them as the jewelry store didn't stock our sizes on hand. I got a surprise when they arrived to find that my husband had requested engraving on the inside of mine It said my precious. I'm a huge lord of the rings fan. I love that ring to death I wear it to this day and it still makes me smile. So then the story This took place seven years after I got married I worked at a chain sandwich shop where we assembled the sandwiches in front of the customer My store was next to a yoga studio, CrossFit training, and plastic surgeon's office. So we got our fair share of Karens and holier-than-thou rich people. It wasn't uncommon for somebody to drive up in a $100,000 sports car, toting a Prada bag and sunglasses that cost more than my rent. They almost always came in to order the most picky, complicated subs, then complain about the price. We were quite used to those kind of people. But this lady took the cake. Enter the entitled Karen and her bratty teenage daughter. They looked the part to a T. They proceeded to order the usual complicated, picky subs, asking tons of questions about the nutritional info of every item. To assemble the food, we wear clear plastic food service gloves. Because my ring is flush to my hand and won't rip the gloves, I had approval from the manager to wear it at work. While assembling this woman's sandwich, her teenage daughter notices my ring. Oh, that's cute. Is that a promise ring? No, that's actually my wedding ring. Karen then scoffs loudly. Are you serious? Yes, it's both my engagement and wedding ring. It has been for several years. Karen looked me dead in the eyes and said, you have a cheap husband. I balked at her comments, but tried to remain professional. That may be your opinion, mom, but I happen to like this ring. I picked it out myself. Honestly, managing to stay professional in that situation is something I could not do when being insulted like that. 
that is crazy and to be completely honest if that was me in that situation screw my job i'm going all out on this woman saying how dare you say something like that to me about my ring karen replied anyway then you have a terrible taste in jewelry she then turned to her daughter if your father had given me a ring that ugly i would have left him on the spot make sure your future husband gets you a ring that at least has diamonds in it i was flawed i usually get a ton of compliments about my ring i never expected someone to insult it let alone straight to my face i was so flabbergasted i couldn't even continue working on her food i excused myself and went into the back and told my co-worker to finish them up for me i couldn't even stand to be around them when i told my manager the whole story he almost didn't believe me we had to watch the security footage to prove it had actually happened we never saw that entitled woman again i'm glad she didn't come back i still shake with rage every time i recount the story i still have that ring on my hand today and it's still the most beautiful wonderful ring i could ever hope for i love my husband very much he's the best thing that's ever happened to me and that matters far more than any jewelry i mean personally guys i've never really understood why buying an expensive ring is so important for so many people i mean surely if like ob you see one that you really like and it happens to be cheaper than you expected just get it it's still a great ring like yes it's not the most expensive ring it's not five thousand dollars plus but who really cares like who's gonna come up to you apart from this entire woman and say oh my god that ring is so cheap why don't you get a more expensive one i mean i say that it did literally just happen in the story um so there's that but still this woman is like a, a once in a lifetime surely that is not going to happen regularly surely i mean ultimately if you're happy with the ring as you say at the end there it really doesn't matter what other people think about it it's just like baffling that people care so much isn't it to like say oh my god how does your husband not buy you a more expensive and nicer ring than that with diamonds in it who gives a sh <laughs> All right, we'll probably have to bleep that, but um, <laughs> that's my general thoughts. Entitled mother demands my prize money. Where I worked, we would have a holiday party where we could play games to win money. The way it worked was that everyone would win at least $5. Well, one of the games was a speed round question type thing. Think family feud style. One of my coworkers who was playing against me loudly commented that she would freak me out and win it's easy i'm no competition etc she was so focused on making faces at me and trying to act tough she completely missed the question i answered correctly and she was out of the game she loudly complained it wasn't fair and sat sulking i won the top prize and she came up to me demanding i give her the money because she's a single mother and needed that money for christmas gifts for her children she then went on saying i'm horrible don't need that money i must hate children their christmas is ruined and it's all my fault and more she even tried to grab at my pocket where my wallet was our boss told her to back off she also tried to rally other workers against me it didn't work and she was written up for months i was called a selfish child hating female dog by her for not giving her the money my prize money amount 40 dollars before all of this she was bragging about all of the stuff she and her baby daddy bought for the children including new phones and gaming consoles so yeah she didn't need it and there i was thinking that op had won a massive prize like at least a thousand dollars or something that's like properly significant enough to you know spend a lot of money on a newborn baby not 40 dollars man forty dollars everyone gets five dollars but you're almost on your way to forty dollars jesus seriously forty dollars you're making this much of a fuss why now moving on to our second story entitled grandparents horrible life revealed during custody battle this one guys strap in is what i'm gonna say it's incredible this story is long but needs to be told it was the darkest time in our lives my husband and i met almost 11 years ago at that time, he had not known where his only son was, and he'd not seen him for two years. Before the disappearance, my husband had been involved daily, taking him to daycare and even the mum to work, until her boyfriend was arrested and transferred to another state for charges he had there. My husband sold his motorcycle to help her pay bills, but instead she packed up and took off to use that money to bail him out and live in the state he was transported to. He tried for months to talk to her parents, but they claimed they didn't know anything. We married right before his deployment, and I decided to start a search, hoping he'd be allowed contact with his son before deploying. I was able to find the woman and discovered she was back in state and had abandoned their child with her parents. 
She allowed him visitation only if we paid for his birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese. So we did this gladly. My husband remained in contact daily until his deployment overseas. He continued trying to call when he had access, but they would not answer and eventually changed their number again so he no longer had that access. We found out later that they were also telling him that his daddy didn't want anything to do with him. I continued to monitor my husband's son's mother's social media and right before his return, I discovered that she had several charges in different counties and was actually on the run. So as soon as he returned stateside, we filed custody. We also discovered that she had abandoned her infant with her brother in another state as her parents refused to take him and had called CPS to pick him up. They only wanted the child she had with my husband because he was paying support. Throughout this process, I'd been angry at my husband because he never fought for his rights. But what I learned and what most men feel is that he believed he had no rights and did whatever they wanted. He and his family would have to pay support in order to have any type of visitation with his son. He didn't know that he could go to court and file for his rights as most men don't. The grandparents were both druggies who eventually dragged their daughter into it. And they tried pawning her onto my husband because her habit had become too much for them. When my husband discovered their lifestyle, he left and she showed up a few months later pregnant. At the time of filing for custody, they awarded the grandparents temp custody during transition because the mother was a wanted fugitive and couldn't be involved. Our state doesn't even allow grandparents rights, but judges here will give over custody to grandparents before they will a dad because they want the government funding they get from collecting child support from dads. We went through a year and three months battling a judge that hates men and straight up told my husband his military career made him look unstable so she'd never turn over custody to him. So in response, he just gave up his military career. In this year and three months, these people would break every court order put in place and have zero responsibility for them. They wouldn't use a car seat. They were doing drug deals around him. He stayed sick due to the cigarette smoke in the house. They refused legal visitation time and took off out of state to hide him. They wouldn't take him to school. They allowed the mother to be in the home, even though there was a no contact order in place for her. Being determined and maybe a little psycho when it comes to my kids, I'd managed to find things our attorney could not. We discovered he didn't have a bed there because they had too many people living in the home. We also found he had an STD at one point, which caused CPS involvement. They were abusive to their other grandson, calling him names and beating him when they'd visit because he was autistic and they themselves had been arrested for making and selling meth and the grandfather had been arrested for beating the grandma. The drug charge was not publicly known, I'm guessing because they ratted. However, there was a case in figuring out what to legally do with property that was forfeited after the arrest. I found this and proof of the bio mum being allowed in the house that resulted in us getting temporary custody. A year and one month in and the grandparents failed a drug test. The daughter had twins that were taken by CPS immediately after birth due to drug use while pregnant and her current fugitive status. Still, the judge refused to give over custody to a willing and able father. Our attorney, also prior military, put pressure on the judge and we had sent a complaint to the state Supreme Court, along with every single state official detailing how this judge was doing everything against the laws in our states. Eventually, the judge couldn't take the pressure and gave us custody. It came out that she was hoping the buyer mum would get her legal stuff in order and she could give over custody to her instead. In August of 2013, we brought our baby home permanently. However, we were forced to give the grandparents visitation that lasted until March of 2014. They continued smoking around him, making him so sick he wound up on multiple medications. They took him to do drug deals, which he told his counselor about, and also told him he wasn't my husband's son and they were going to get custody back, resulting in lots of nightmares. They'd also been telling him my husband never loved him or had anything to do with him, which took weeks in counseling and pictures proving otherwise. They put this boy through hell. His teeth were rotted out of his head and at four and five, he spent his life in front of two TVs with just cartoons and video games. He only ate fast food and pop and was too weak to pedal a bicycle. He watched his mother get beat and a knife to her throat and then she'd disappear for hours to go and do drugs, leaving him at three years old to care for an infant. They mentally abused him and used him for child support. 
The last time he came home reeking of cigarettes so bad it threw my older daughter into an asthma attack and that ended their visits. The things they told him and did have trickled out through the years. He remembered one of the times we were refused visitation was because his mother had taken him and hid in a hotel. He watched her steal things from stores and she was arrested four times at their house through all of this. Yes, I called and reported it every time. These horrible people have not been part of his life since then. His bio mum has done a stint in prison and is once again running from new charges and her probation. He'll be 14 years old this year and he's very needy with me because I make him feel loved and safe. This child is one of the biggest blessings I've ever had. He's so thoughtful and kind and tries to take care of me. His father is scared to let him go anywhere away from us because of the trauma that not knowing where he was caused and then hearing what all he went through in that time. I've never met more horrible people in my life, nor have I ever imagined how resilient he would be after going through all this. He's so very smart, special, and a gift I thank God for daily. We both agree that even with my husband's deployments, which was a pretty bad one, this was far worse than anything else. We've spent years now fighting for father's rights across the country and been a part of some law changes in our state. We have to inform men of their rights. We have to give them the resources because children deserve both parents. It's disgusting how much it costs in legal fees just to be a parent and maybe one day it won't be necessary. We've got people working on the government level to change these laws that created this inequality. My husband is an amazing father. Not only did he raise his three children from a previous marriage, but we've done youth and college age ministry together, giving kids a family where they didn't have one before. We've provided a home, food, insurance, gas money, and phones. He will never stop caring and loving those that were abandoned. There are so many men out there that are amazing fathers, but don't get the chance to be. They take their lives daily. They have everything taken from them and are financially ruined when all they want is to love their kids. Children deserve custody of both parents. Alienation has to stop. Our now 14 year old is our youngest. That may have been the worst thing we've ever gone through, but I'd do it again for him. I will never not fight for my kids and I'll never not fight for other fathers going through this. If you know one, check on them, hook them up with groups that can help give information and encouragement. Courts are not fair and men feel the loss of their children the same as a mother. They're hurting and grieving daily for a child that is still alive. They're losing hope and giving up. They're being made to feel guilty if they stop fighting because they're tired and broke. It's emotionally draining and leaves you completely depleted. These men eventually believe that it would be better for their kids if they just walk away. They don't want them in the middle of the fighting anymore. Maybe the ex and judges convince them that they're not worthy so their kids will be better without them. A very interesting theme there. I'll be honest, guys, I really don't have much knowledge or experience in terms of, you know, uh, custody, divorce, that sort of stuff. Unfortunately, my parents are still together and, you know, I don't really know much about all that stuff. I'll be honest. So you guys probably can enlighten me in the comments down below. But I do know that, yeah, OP is definitely right. I mean, all the specifics in law are interesting there. And the fact that judges are still, well, some judges anyway, are still massively favoring towards women than, than men in terms of custody is definitely true. But yeah, I, I wonder why there is this stigma or this like general feeling that men are less responsible than women when it comes to parenting maybe that's true as well maybe that is just a fact but it is definitely unfair on men like you know op's husband in this story who clearly is a great man would do anything to you know see their child and look after their son but it's not being allowed to and in fact you know it goes the other way like clearly the woman his ex and their family are just completely mental why is the judge siding with them over the man is it just because she's a woman i don't know it's tough to say maybe there are other reasons that weren't disclosed in this in this story in this post i'm not sure though because as it stands in that story yeah a severe lack of equality going on in in this case in particular and if this is a common thing you know throughout court cases and and custody and divorce sort of battles then it's very worrying isn't it and i'm not really sure why it's going on but yeah as i say please let me know down below if you know anything about this have experience with it or you know are a lawyer that'd be ideal because i really don't know too much but yeah interesting stuff nonetheless hope you enjoyed that story an entitled mum wants to get her entitled kid to drive my new car 
I got into Redditor videos a few days ago and I remembered an entitled parent story that happened to me about half a year ago. Well, first of all, OP, you're an absolute legend for watching my videos. Second of all, guys, if you're watching and you are new to my channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. It's totally free and it makes me feel incredible. So thank you. Anyway, sorry for that. Let's get into this story. So for some context, I bought myself a Mini Cooper SE the first fully electric vehicle by Mini a few weeks before this story happens. Where I live, in Germany, electric cars need to have a so-called AVAS, which is Acoustic Vehicle Alerting System, turned on when driving below 30 kilometers per hour. The AVAS makes a sound to warn walkers and bikers on the street because electric vehicles normally don't make much noise. The one on the Mini Cooper SE kind of sounds like a spaceship. Now, this will be important for later. Can I just say, I actually had no idea that this was the case. I didn't know that electric cars were required to make a noise when they're going at a certain speed, below a certain speed threshold. That makes a lot of sense to me because I've always wondered, you know, cars that are silent, surely they're going to, you know, cause some crashes. That is genius. Now onto the story. About half a year ago, we celebrated my grandma's 60th birthday and I took my new mini to get to the celebration. I didn't know who else was invited, but I didn't really care at the time. The ride to my grandma's place was long and I knew that I needed to recharge at my grandma's place or else I couldn't make it back home. So I arrive and I see a few people, including my entitled aunt and her entitled kid, waiting for me in the driveway. To park in the parking lot that they'd prepared for me, the one next to an outlet where I could charge my car, I drove rather slowly because I'd only done this a few times before and I was extra careful. Therefore, the AVAS system was turned on. I get out, plug my car into the outlet and we go inside to celebrate. After about two hours, I wanted to go and check if my car was all right. Remember guys, it was rather new at this time, so this was completely normal and to get some fresh air as well. I go out and see the entitled aunt and her kid looking at my car. The following conversation went kind of like this. Mummy, this car sounded like a spaceship. I know, sweetie. I don't know why it does that, though. Uh, guys, can I help you with something? Is this your car? Yes. My child wants to drive it. Uh, what? I, I can drive it for a bit and take him with me if that's what you'd like? <laughs> no, no, uh, he wants to drive it. It doesn't look as complicated as a normal car, so I'm sure he can drive it. For some context, the Cooper SE has only two pedals and no gear lever because it's electric. Also, when talking about my car earlier, I said that it feels like you're driving a go-kart. Uh, I can assure you that he doesn't want to drive it. It's way more complicated than it looks. But it sounded like a spaceship, so it can't be more than a little toy. I want to drive that spaceship now! Sorry, but I can't allow that. Why not? You're just being selfish. Sure, he can drive for a minute or two in the driveway just here. No, he's just a kid. Well, I bet you don't even own that car. It sure is stolen or someone else owns it. Uh, no, I've literally got the keys. I pull out the keys and open the car. Big, big mistake. Look, sweetie, and now you can get in. She picks up her son and puts him on the driver's seat. I'm very annoyed and angry at this point. Excuse me, what do you think you're doing? You've been very rude to me and my little angel, so he deserves to drive your car. Now, the kid obviously couldn't start up the car because it was still plugged in, but he was messing around with the electronics inside and he tried to actually start the engine multiple times. There's a yellow obvious start switch below the GPS system. Would you please take your kid out of my car? No, he deserves it. That's where I'd had enough. I pushed the entire mum aside and opened the driver's seat door. I take the entitled kid out of my car myself and put him on the floor on his feet. What does the entitled butthole do? He lets himself fall on purpose and then starts crying that I broke his arm while taking him out of the car. Of course, the mum then starts screaming and shouting about how close her son was to death. I really didn't use much force or anything. The other family members hear the entitled kids crying. Meanwhile, I unplug my car, get into it and drive away. <laughs> So OP's just off. He's out of here. That's actually quite a sensible solution, to be fair. If you stuck around and the kid was crying and it was two people blaming you, you could have been in a lot of trouble. So I think that was actually a very good idea. On my way back home, I had to recharge once. And that's where I called the others back and tell them what actually happened. They tell me that my entitled aunt tried to call an ambulance and actually was kicked out of the celebration. Oh, and also, just in case any of you are wondering if this story was fake or not, Opie's actually said, if you tell me this is a fake story, I'll tell you that you're wrong. Thanks for reading. 
Well, that clears that one up then. Oh, and also, just in case any of you are wondering if this story might be fake, Opie actually says at the bottom of this story, if you tell me this is fake, I'll tell you that you're wrong. Thanks for reading. Well, I guess that clears it up then. He also says in the comments down below that the kid would have been about six or seven years old, which honestly just makes the story even more mad because what are you doing, woman? Uh, I don't understand. Has this lady never been in a car before? I mean, what does this lady not understand though, really? Driving a car, by the way, is quite hard, especially if you've never done it before. Even for me, right? I passed my test a couple years ago and I'm still terrible at driving. In fact, I literally haven't driven since I passed my test. But um, yeah, it's tough to do, especially in a manual car. Like, even if it's an electric automatic car, it's still hard. You gotta be aware, you gotta have common sense. You gotta be, well, the legal age, 17, 18, whatever it is in Germany. I don't know, but not six or seven. That's for sure. And even on private property, even in a parking lot, you're going to be have to making turns and that sort of stuff and being able to look over the steering wheel and see where you're going. It's an obvious no. Why? And now moving on to our second story. A wild Karen got arrested with a felony. For some background, I'm a 35 year old father of two boys. I have PTSD due to time overseas and have the physical scars to match the mental ones. I have an incredible wife that knows me and knows what situations I should avoid. My children are amazing, but this story revolves around my youngest son and my service dog. James, my youngest son, has autism, and we share a special bond because some things that set him off also put my teeth on edge. Spike is my English bulldog. He is my service dog. He's well-trained, lazy, judgmental, and overall uninterested in anything he can't eat. He's also very in tune to James and my emotions and will provide a distraction when we get overwhelmed. Basically, he's like, oh, you're stressed? Here, scratch my butt. You'll feel better and I'll get attention. It's a win-win. So now for the story. My family recently moved to Texas. Because we now live very close to an amusement park, we got memberships. Shout out to the park for being amazing when it comes to special needs. This particular park in Arlington, Texas has a special program for autistic people. They have rooms set aside to chill out if you're overstimulated so you can relax, go back out, get overstimulated again and around and around you go. That is amazing. With James, we also don't have to wait in lines. This is a huge thing and the cause of this story. The park has a pass that lets you skip most of the lines and they charge an arm and a leg for this. However, with that pass, you still end up in a line of the hundreds of people that also have that pass. But James gets no lines at all. We get a special pass and we go in through the exit. The worker signs the pass and we go on the ride. James has a favorite ride, the log ride. There have been days that we'd ride the log ride over and over, then eat. We also have the food pass, which we pay for, then go back to the log ride. On this day, Tom, my eldest, and James wanted to go on the log ride. So we made our way to the exit and left my wife and Spike in the shade because someone's got to stay with him and bulldogs and rides obviously don't mix. As we were going into the exit, a woman started screaming at us. I've absolutely no hearing on my right side. Thanks, high pressure wave so I didn't consider it worth turning my head to listen to. Now, because we ride this ride almost exclusively, the workers on this ride know us by name and sight. James even talks to them, which is rare. We go in, show the pass, sit and ride. This time though, Tabitha, I'll call her Tabitha because Karen is overused, good point. The woman that was screaming at us as we were walking in through the exits made her way to where the speedy pass ends at the ride, where a red shirt will check her pass and let her go on her way. But she didn't even want to ride. She just wanted to yell about us going in through the exits and how we are abusing the system. Now, anyone that looks at James can see he's all in the world on his own and wouldn't be surprised if he's literally reading the future or talking to aliens. He's awesome. The red shirt tries to calm her down. Tom is getting upset because he's a normal nine-year-old and adults yelling is uncool. James is making his excited sounds and waiting for the log to stop so he can get in. We get in and as we float away, we still hear Tabitha screaming. The ride ends and we exit. We figured we'd never see Tabitha again, but obviously as I'm posting this, it didn't really go that way. Tabitha appeared like a dark brother after making the sacrifice, Elder Scrolls reference, hooting and screaming. She was screaming that just because James is an R word doesn't mean we get extra rights. The screaming causes James to let out his super screech. Now, anyone that knows autism knows that autistic kids have superpowers. In James's case, it's a supersonic 
ear-shattering, high-pitched screech that makes your eyes swim and makes it feel like things in your head are moving that really shouldn't. This whole time, Spike was lying on the ground in the froggy position, as bulldogs do, just looking at Tabitha like she's a rabid dog but not worth getting up for. As we are being screamed at, I see two officers approaching from behind Tabitha. I smile. My smile must have broke Tabitha because she then hauled off and kicked Spike. This flips my switch because now my family is literally under attack and I start to react. Before I could make contact, Tabitha is already in the air, being half carried, half dragged away while being cuffed. Now in front of me is a well-dressed and annoyed looking officer. He tells us he heard the screech and started heading towards it because they thought a ride broke or something actually bad had happened. I take the time to unflip that switch and examine Spike. He's limping and crying. I feel his hips and feel that his hip is dislocated. The officer asks what happened and we all explain what went on from A to Z. He asks if Spike is a service dog. I say yes. He smiles. I'm not really in a smart mood, but it catches me off guard. He explains that in Texas, to intentionally injure a service dog is actually a felony. By this time, park security arrived and issued a trespass order to Tabitha. The officers ask if I want to press charges. I look at Spike and I look back. Yes, I say. Tabitha and her tiny mouse-like husband start to freak out as Tabitha is loaded onto a golf cart. We hop on a cart too and leave to go to the vet. The vet fixed Spike and all is well. We went back the next day with Spike in a stroller. No one batted an eyelid and everyone loves the bulldog in a stroller. I let people pet him, he's a hoot and the park is an amazing place. I've been contacted by the investigating officer and have given depositions. I may have to testify, but I look forward to sitting on the bench with Spike on my lap. Uh, Yeah, pretty extreme reaction there from this woman. Not getting what you want in a certain situation. I'm just going to kick a dog. Why? Well, I don't really know. It's not really something that I would do in that situation. And I imagine not something that many people would think to do. But she did it. Quite why she did it, I'm not really sure. A question, actually, for those of you that know about, you know, the law and dogs in general. Is it therefore not a felony if you just kick a random dog? Does it have to be a service dog for it to be a felony? Because if that's the case, shouldn't it have the same sort of punishment if it's a dog or a service dog or just any animal? Kicking any sort of animal is a little bit mad. I think. But yeah, overall, Spike sounds like an absolute legend of a dog and um, definitely sue this woman for as much money as she has because kicking an animal, nah, that is just not on. I work in an antique store. Don't let your child climb in the vase. Seriously, if they break it, you have to buy it. A child, maybe seven years old, got stuck in a very large, very expensive vase today. My boss was on the shop floor. He explained the policy about breakages to the parents of this kid. But he's a child, they squealed. My boss just shrugged and pointed to the policy poster. He pointed out the cameras that caught them lifting their child into said expensive vase for funsies. The stuck child began to panic. I came out of the back to a broken vase and parents threatening to sue. So my boss threatened to call the police. In the end, the parents did pay for the vase and took their uninjured child away, thankfully. Basically, don't put your kids in expensive vases. I feel this should go without saying. A cheeky little story to start off today's episode then. I mean, to be fair, if the kid had gone in the vase himself, you could say, you know what, they're just a kid. But the parents putting their own kid in the vase and then saying, you know what, we're not paying. And if you force us to, we're going to sue. Why? Now moving on to our second story. My parents attempt to break up my relationship several times, culminating in the Thanksgiving from heck. Okay, this is a long one, but I hope it's worth a listen. My wife is a long-time lurker of this subreddit, and I've recently started reading these and listening to the stories, so I was inspired to post. My parents have long been a pain in my butt, but for now, I'm going to mainly focus on my Thanksgiving from heck and the incidents leading up to it. A few years ago, I met my future wife on an online dating app. We hit it off fairly quickly, and the relationship progressed really fast. I was in my late 20s and she turned 30 soon after we met. We both had a good idea of what we were looking for in a partner and had no interest in games. I met her parents within a few months, though I was much more reluctant to introduce her to mine for reasons that will become apparent. The problems began almost as soon as I told my folks I was dating someone. 
This was about six months into my relationship as I was reluctant to inform my parents due to the fact they tried to call the cops on my last long-term girlfriend. I might share that story later. Please do. Myself, my brother, and my parents were having dinner at a local Mexican restaurant and making small talk. They started asking me questions about my girlfriend, mostly the usual innocent questions, but at some point I let slip that she was Jewish. Boy, was that a mistake. My parents are hyper conservative Christians. For years, they've been trying to get me to date a girl from our church, a good friend of mine, but we were never really a match to be a couple. And they always expected I would marry someone who was at least Christian. I am Christian by belief to this day, but I rarely have interactions with the church due to some incidents with the priest. No, not that kind of incident, but yet another good story for later. My dad, without missing a beat, told me I should break up with my girlfriend. He told me that I was going to marry a Christian girl. And that was that. I was fuming. And I don't remember the full extent of the rest of that conversation. But I told him that I wasn't breaking up with her. And the rest of the dinner was tense. The next couple of months went about as smooth as you might imagine. But I thought I was slowly wearing them down. At some point, they invited my girlfriend and I over for dinner. And I thought there was finally some progress being made. Nope. They got my brother to distract me in another room of the house while they sat down with my girlfriend and explained why they did not think she was good for me. They straight up told my girlfriend that she needed to break up with me because I was going to marry a good Christian girl. They even offered to pay her if she ended up leaving me. My girlfriend politely told them off and we left. Fast forward to November. My family is really big on the holidays, as I know many are, and we had very large extended family gatherings for Thanksgiving and Christmas. I think in my entire life, we only missed one of these events. I wanted to go and take my girlfriend to meet the rest of the family. My parents may have had their heads up their butts, but the rest of my family has always seemed great to me. The event would be at my grandmother's house this year, my mum's mother, with a small gathering for my dad's side the day before Thanksgiving. I talked to my grandmother, who was fine with me bringing my girlfriend up so long as she slept in a separate room. No problem. There's no way I'm going to have sex with my girlfriend in my grandmother's house anyway. I decided to ask my mother as well. Not that I needed her permission, but I'm an optimist, and I hoped that she'd be on board and maybe see my girlfriend having positive interactions with the family would help the general situation. My mother was resistant at first, mainly because she was upset that we were getting an apartment together and did not want to encourage the relationship further. But eventually, she agreed. I should also note, I set some very clear boundaries with my mother about conversation for this trip which she brushed off as unnecessary, but I had my guard up nonetheless. We head out to my grandmother's city, and frankly, the first day is nothing but pleasant. My girlfriend gets to meet both of my grandmothers, some of my cousins, and other extended family. We're having a fairly good time, and I think things are actually going to go well, until my girlfriend and I decide to go to a movie. We are going to go and see Arrival in theaters. My brother, who is five years older than me, wants to tag along. He rode up with my parents. My girlfriend and I came up in my car. So my brother has to ride with us to the movie. The three of us sit together and my girlfriend and I snuggle through most of it. It was a fantastic movie and the ending made me cry. My girlfriend held me as the credits rolled, but I think all the cuddles had not sat well with my brother, who was single. He got up and I will never forget what he said or the malicious tone in which he said it. Too bad mum and dad will never let you marry her because she's Jew. My brother jogged out of the theater before either my girlfriend or I could muster up a response. We sat there, a bit dumbfounded for a few minutes. Eventually, the house lights went up in the theater and we tried to formulate a plan. I have no idea where my brother is at this point, but he can't go too far considering we drove him. I decided to call my folks, considering I have no clue where he is and I really don't want to talk to him at this point. To my surprise, my mother sides with me and tells me it's alright if we just leave him. He can get an Uber back. We half consider it, but we find him on the way out. And my girlfriend, who is used to dealing with buttholes and children in her job, completely cows him with words. He silently rides back with us. We drop him off and my girlfriend and I go have dinner by ourselves. We debate just leaving entirely, but decide my parents themselves have not crossed any of the boundaries we set, so we're gonna stay for now. 
it wouldn't take them very long though That same evening, I was getting ready to watch some Netflix in bed with my girlfriend. Nothing untoward was going to happen. She just likes falling asleep to the Great British Baking Show. As I walk past the living room, my mother calls me in and complains that I am not spending enough time with my family. I'm a bit angry at this common manipulation tactic from my mother, but I go and chat for my grandmother's sake. My mum tries to tell me that my grandmother is upset with me, that my girlfriend and I are planning on moving in together before we're even married. I decide that my grandmother does not need my mother being a mouthpiece for her, so I sit on the couch in between the two of them and face my grandmother. My grandmother and I chat. She's a bit worried about me moving in with the woman while unwed, but we calmly discuss the situation. She doesn't back down on her objection, but eventually concedes that it's my life She likes my girlfriend and she's happy for us regardless this entire time My mother has been constantly trying to butt in on the conversation But I am physically putting myself between her and my grandmother, which is just annoying her even more Eventually my father sees what's going on and also butts in Apparently he can't contain himself anymore and just goes off about everything. He sees wrong with my relationship I can't remember his exact gripes. I likely tuned them out, but I did call him a coward for talking rubbish behind my girlfriend's back. She was in her room still waiting on me. This really angered him and he stormed out to fetch my girlfriend. He came back with her in tow and proceeded to tear into her in front of me, my mum, and my grandmother, who was mortified that this was happening in her house. He said, My son will be Christian. His wife will be Christian. His children will be baptized in our church. He was almost screaming at her. He also basically accused her of trying to steal my inheritance by getting knocked up by me and added some very inappropriate commentary about how he knew my girlfriend was getting older and her biological clock was ticking down. Through the whole tirade, my wife stood there quietly. Like I said, she's used to dealing with buttholes and she's tough as nails. Letting him finish up and run out of energy, my girlfriend turned to my grandmother and thanked her for her hospitality before turning back to my father and asking him, why did you even invite us here if you were going to act like this? My dad yelled again, we did not invite you here. We never would have invited you here. At this point, I gleefully pulled out my phone and showed him the conversation I had had with my mother, where she literally agreed for my girlfriend to be here. My dad couldn't find the words, but just glared at his wife. At this point, I told them that my girlfriend and I were leaving. It was near 11 o'clock, but we packed up my car and left for our hometown. My dad got in one more word before we left, saying, you two better have broken up by the time you get home. Have a long, hard think about your future. To which I just laughed as we got in the car. My girlfriend and I drove home on pure adrenaline. We alternated between angry, humiliation, and frustration at the absurdity of the whole thing. This story does have something of a happy ending though. In the days that followed, we got a lot of calls and messages of support from my relatives, who I hadn't told about the incident. It turns out my brother had made some vague social media posts about how sad he was for me and asking everyone to pray for my brother. Apparently, many of my relatives took this to mean I'd been hurt and were all calling my mother and father. When my parents were forced to explain the situation, all of my relatives sided with my girlfriend and I. In the months that followed, this incident caused my grandmother to think back on how she acted with her own daughters. It turns out that my mother had been the only marriage out of three daughters my grandmother had actually approved of. This incident made my grandmother realize that she'd acted poorly with her other daughters and she came to them to finally mend those old wounds. I had no idea. It always seemed like my grandmother and her daughters had a great relationship, but these were old wounds that had just scabbed rather than really healed. Overall, my family got closer because of this incident. In addition, my father has had a dramatic change over the course of the intervening years, where once it seemed like we were not going to invite my parents to our wedding, my dad ended up actually being the happiest person there when my girlfriend, now wife, and I tied the knots. This has been helped by the fact that he discovered some underlying mental health issues after that Thanksgiving and the meds he is using are truly helping him. He started acting like the father I loved when I was a kid. 
My mother is still a problem and boy do I have more stories But she's mostly behaving because she knows my wife and I can and will block her from seeing her future grandchildren Now this was a truly great story Not very often do we see entitled people in the stories that I read to you guys actually, you know Improve their lives understand the mistakes they've made in their past and actually become better people It's so crazy to see that that has happened with the vast majority of the people that were the problem in this story op I mean your dad is one thing but your grandmother to go back with her own daughters and say you know what i'm so sorry about how i acted and and didn't approve of your marriages and you know let's try and heal those wounds of so many years ago is amazing so ultimately i've got to say well done to you and your girlfriend for standing up to these people and you know making them change their ways and really consider it all in a different perspective and go back and correct their mistakes it's amazing to see i wish the same could be said about your mother but unfortunately um i don't think she's quite there yet and if that is true about her just wanting to see her grandchildren and that's the only reason why she's being nice to you and your girlfriend your wife now and that is very very sad i'm not gonna lie hopefully you know enough conversations with her own mother with your dad her husband can make her understand that there's no reason to be like that just accept that your, your son is very happy in a lovely relationship just be nice entitled karen wants free pizza forever gets banned instead so i'm a store manager for a large chain pizza place that charges a bit more than the competition but makes an arguably better product we try to always believe the customer and make them happy if something is wrong we have a loyal base of regulars who order often as well as a lot of other business from randoms in the several nearby hotels so it's friday night an entitled karen calls in an order a very simple pepperoni and jalapeno pizza the driver delivers it 30 minutes later, I'm asked to talk to an angry customer on the phone. It is the Karen. Is this the manager? I've been on hold for over half an hour. Now, that is impossible, but okay. I'm very sorry about that, mom. What seems to be the problem? I'm at the hotel and your driver was so rude and my pizza is burnt. I'm very sorry to hear that the pizza was not up to our quality standards. Can I make you another and send it out? No, don't bother. You've already ruined my kids' dinner and they're crying now. Give me a credit. Now that, by the way, is a major red flag. Okay, mom, I'll credit your number and when you order next, it will be free. I'm very sorry again. Have a good night. Whatever. Then she hangs up. I credit the number and think, whatever, that's the end of it. Roll on Saturday night. A colleague again says to me, hey, this lady on the phone wants to speak to a manager. Hello, thank you for holding. This is the manager. Are you all idiotic? How long does it take to answer the freaking phone? I'm sorry, what? You've only been on hold for a moment while my employee got me. Don't freaking tell me how long I've been on hold. I know how long I've been on hold for. I was groaning inwardly already. A fun customer. Yippee. Uh, I'm sorry, mum. How can I assist you? My pizza is burnt and you have the rudest freaking delivery driver. They practically threw the pizza in my face. A light bulb clicked at this story. I've dealt with this lady before. I'm sorry to hear that. I'll definitely talk to the driver about it. Um, can I make you a new pizza to replace the one you said is burnt? No, give me a credit. Okay, mom. Uh, to ensure our quality standards are being met, can I have a driver come and pick up the burnt pizza so I can talk to my production staff about it? No, we, we ate it. Wait, you, you ate the burnt pizza? Yes, we were starving and couldn't wait for a remake. Uh, just give me a credit. What, for the pizza you ate? Well, it was freaking burnt. Let me speak to a manager. I am the manager. No, I want to speak to your manager. You're being so rude and disrespectful. It's because I'm black, isn't it? You freaking racist POS. Mom, one, stop cussing. Two, I have no idea what you look like or who you are. But And she cuts me off. That's right, you idiot. You don't know who the frick I am, but you're about to find out. She then hangs up before I can say anything else. Being as she was extra, I let my district manager know about a possible complaint on my behavior. And I said what actually went down. Just as I get off the phone with her, I hear yelling in the lobby. It was her. Where is that idiotic racist manager? I step around the partition and see a cow of a woman wearing tacky bright green and orange with red shoes. What an image of an outfit that is, by the way, guys. That is astonishing. Can I help you? 
I'm already done with this person because I know exactly who it is. What, you're gonna say something to me now? Give me a dang refund for my burnt pizza and I want gas money as well for driving over here. You didn't pay for any pizza. It was free. And we don't reimburse gas for people driving to the store. What, you think this is a freaking joke? You're gonna give me my freaking money or it's gonna go off in this building. Now, I am 100% done at this point. Get out. What the F did you say? Get out of the store. You can't tell me to leave. This is a public space. No, mom, it's a private business and you are no longer allowed. I'm refusing to serve you. Leave now or I'll be forced to call the police. F you, F you. She continued to bellow this until the police arrive. I had to hear every sing-song version of F you for about five minutes. The police said to me, do you want to trespass, sir? Uh, yeah, uh, she isn't welcome here anymore. I replied now the police in our town are super cool with us because we give them special discounts And occasionally donate a stack of pizzas to the precinct the policeman who was just outside the main door easily heard me Okay, so you are now being trespassed. He said to the woman do not come here Do not linger in the parking lot or you will be arrested This applies for every single chain of the pizza store not just this one the defeated look on her face when he said that was almost worth the cost of admission. Yes, not the most epic of endings, I know, but what can you do? I don't know, OP. Personally, I think that ending was pretty good, you know? Everyone got the justice that, that they deserved and, you know, you got on with your day and this horrible Karen was bad from your pizza store. Good stuff, no? I mean, maybe it might have been better had you got some sort of reaction out of her and, you know, had her actually arrested, but overall, pretty realistic ending to just say, no, you're bad for trespassing, do not come here again, and don't try and use the same techniques to get a free pizza time after time. How stupid do you have to be? Surely at that point, when you get the first credit for the pizza, you, you take the pizza and you run. You go to a different store maybe and try a technique again. You don't try it at the same restaurant with the same manager, the same staff. They're going to remember your voice. They're going to know who you are. They're going to say, oh, just the other day, someone used the same technique and got some credit off me. I wonder if they're the same person. Oh, wait, yes, they obviously are. How dumb can you be? Take the free pizza and run. Now moving on to our next story. Entitled mother gets her parcels delivered to my home. This story is something that happened to me and my fiance fairly recently. We recently bought our first home together in a nice quiet area in the north of England. If you're not familiar with the British postal system, basically we get letters delivered through flaps in our front doors and parcels that are larger than the letterbox get handed to us if we are in. If we're not in, they get given to a neighbor and we can collect them later. If no one can take them, they get taken back to the depot where they sit or are returned to the sender. So last month, we were just settling into our new home and my fiance bought some clothes online for a local gym he wanted to join. I was in the house the day of the delivery as I was expecting it and I'm working from home. When the delivery lady arrived with the parcel, there were two. I thought nothing of it at first and put it in the garage for my fiance to open later on. When he came in from work, he rushes to open his delivery like it was Christmas. And to his surprise, the second parcel was not for him. It had our address on, but no name. We were both confused at this point and thought it may be for one of the neighbors and that they would collect it later. Time goes by and we get a note through the door that reads, Hey, my son got his parcel delivered to your house. Call me on insert number here so I can come and collect it. Again, we thought it was a neighbor. So my fiance called the number for a woman to answer and say she'll be over shortly to collect the parcel. It turned out she lived across the town and her son chose our address to have it delivered to. Look, we thought this was weird, but we assumed it must have been a mistake. Anyways, we thought that was the last of it. But the next day, I get two more parcels for this lady's son. Again, with no name, but with our address on the package. At this point, I'm thinking it was a mistake on their part, or possibly they used to live here. Anyway, they came to collect their parcels and all was well. But guess what? More and more parcels over the next week arrive for this lady's son. At this point, I'm starting to get really annoyed by this, as even though I work from home, I can't leave meetings constantly to collect parcels that aren't even ours. So the next day, when the parcel lady comes, I just tell her, sorry, this isn't for me, and you're gonna need to return it to the sender. So off she goes and takes the parcel back to the depot. A few hours later, I hear a knock at the door, and guess who? The entitled mother is standing there with her son. 
Now, I hate confrontation, so my memory of the conversation is a bit hazy, but she was furious that we denied her parcel and now she had to wait for it to be re-delivered. I told her she needs to get her parcels delivered to her own home as it's weird and inconvenient for me. Like, I don't even know this lady. She then tells me it's easier for her to get them delivered to my home as I'm always in and she isn't. Now look, maybe this would be possibly okay if I was friends with her and she'd asked me beforehand, but she lives across town and chose a random address for her parcels. Anyways, she leaves and I think that finally, maybe this is the end of the story, but parcels keep showing up and for the next week, I politely tell the parcel lady they aren't mine and to return to sender. After a week of doing this, I stopped getting the parcels, so I guess she finally got the message. How entitled must this woman have been to think it's okay to get parcels delivered to a random person's home that she doesn't even know because it's easier for her? I really hope she wasn't doing this to someone else after me. But it was satisfying to know that she would have to wait twice as long for her parcels because they were returned to sender. All right, now this one, guys, I'll be honest. I don't understand this at all because how would you ever like initially find the address of this random person? So OP in this in this story, that's the address that this Karen has eventually found of somebody who's willing to open packages and, and have Karen collect them. But what if you were doing this just from the off? Like when you first started doing this, You have to select a random address, right? I guess relatively near to you, but not too near that you know the person. How do you know? My point is, how do you know that the address that you're sending your packages to, the person who lives there isn't just going to take the packages as their own? Like, how do you know they're just going to hold them? Why would they not either take it as their own if they were a bit, you know, naughty, I guess, or just say, no, that's not mine and return it? How can you know for sure that the person is just going to hold the packages and wait for you to come there? I don't get it. And also, is it worth all this fuss just because you're not at home when the package might come to know that you're going to be able to get the package off the person who is at home? Like, as you can probably tell, I have a lot of questions here about this story. It's a very, very strange one, I think. I'm, I'm just a little bit shocked. I don't really know what's going on there at all. I mean, just looking at the comments here on Reddit, a lot of people, uh, a lot cleverer than me, are saying maybe there was something illicit or illegal in the packages. And that that was why this woman, this Karen, couldn't risk them going to her home. They were going to yours instead. And that would make a lot of sense. Because I'll be honest, guys, I don't understand why anyone would send packages to a different address. It makes no sense to me. Apart from if this might be the reason. If this is the reason, first of all, it makes complete sense. Second of all, OP, you're in danger, I reckon. Because, you know, you, you can't be too careful with this sort of stuff. And if you're accidentally carrying or it looks like you're ordering illicit substances or whatever... You could be in big trouble. So, um, yeah, I reckon call the police on this one. This is why I read the comments of the Reddit always after I read a story because everyone there is much more clever than me. And likewise, all you watching right now, you're also more intelligent than me. So if you guys have any better idea as to what might be going on here, please leave your comments, your conspiracy theories, your solutions to what OP could do down below. And uh, hopefully we can all find a a common solution to what might be going on here because it's very perplexing for for sure. Mum books the ice rink for the wrong day and expects us to share. For some background, I am an adult figure skater and I practice in a big group of other adults. There are skaters going from beginners up to former elite skaters. During Corona, the public rink we usually skate in has been closed, and occasionally we've rented a private rink for an hour to skate. It's a lot more expensive than our ordinary practice, but you do what you must. Also, it's incredibly hard to get these time slots since the demand is so high. Skating is a corona safe sport, no worries. Only eight of us go on the ice and we all change outside. It's all correct by our laws. A few months ago, we'd rented the ice and arrived at our time. Since we are responsible and change outside, we couldn't see what was happening inside. Once me and one of the other skaters were ready to go onto the ice, we headed inside. But by the rink side, we found about 10 parents and something like 15 to 20 children aged three to six years. One of the mums, the entitled mum of this story, approached me with a worried expression. Are you the ones that rented the ice? Yes. I. Uh, y- you see, we were just informed that we booked the wrong day. Um, apparently we booked next week this time, but we're here today. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. What a bummer. The mum then looks at me and the other skater. Is it just the two of you? The others are still tying their skates on outside and only the two of us had come inside at this point. No, unfortunately, it's a whole group of us. Oh, can't we split the ice half and half? 
Uh, no, we're not here to joy skates. We're practicing seriously. For several reasons. The first and foremost, it's incredibly dangerous. If I run into a child, I'm gonna hurt it badly, and I risk hurting myself too. But I mean, it's your kid. Do you want its face sliced up? Now, I would never, ever let my non-existing kids on the ice during a serious practice. Secondly, we rent the rink to be able to practice freely. Half the rink only makes it impossible to practice your program. And thirdly, children usually drag a lot of mud onto the ice, either on their overalls or the parents on their shoes when they walk onto the ice to help them when they fall. Dirt and mud is a big no-no for skaters. It'll wear them out quickly and we'll have to pay for resharpening. Okay, so at this point, I kind of felt sorry for them. We all screw up sometimes and it sucks. It can't be fun to reschedule an entire event like this, and I get that. It's what happens next that makes this story entitled. The mum goes to the other parents, and I hear her saying silently, I guess you could come next week if that fits you. Then she goes to the children, points at us, and says loudly, These people don't want you to skate. They want it all for themselves. With a super accusing tone, like we personally were responsible for her mistake. I ignore her and step onto the ice together with the other skater. This commotion already cost us a few minutes of our short time. I see one more from our group enter the rink and the entitled mum speaks to her too. I can't hear it though. This woman later confirmed to me that the entitled mum tried the same trick on her, guilting her into letting them share the ice and then even asked if the children, who were now all out of their skates, could at least walk out onto the ice to touch it. Since they were all wearing shoes, and the mud rule still applies, my friend declines. Also, when the ice is newly resurfaced, it's crazy slippery and very hard to walk on. There's a big risk of falling over and hurting yourself. The rest of our group arrives and we start warming up. Half a minute later, the entitled mum opens the gate and lets two of the children run straight onto the ice. I wave at her to get them back off the ice and she waits purposely before she tells them to come back. Only they don't listen. She lets them slide around however much they want. Eventually, she has to walk out on her muddy shoes to pick them up and go back. Not a sorry, not anything. And that's that. Not the worst entitlement overall, but it still boils my blood. Especially how this entitled mum tried to blame us in front of the kids. Kids are usually very fond of looking at us skating, actually, since it looks cool. And when we skate publicly, we often show off whatever they want to see or teach them something. I hate to be accused of being the bad guy. Yeah, I completely agree with OP. Obviously, people can make mistakes, but you know, just admit that you've made your mistake. Yeah, it's annoying because you brought your kids down, loads of other parents. I'm not really sure, to be honest, how that is going on during COVID times. That's something to think about, given that, you know, OP has said that they only had eight people on the ice. But hey, forget about that. That might be a problem on its own. But yeah, once you realize that you've made a mistake and OP and her skaters have only got an hour on the ice, get out of there. It's annoying, but I'm sorry, you haven't booked it. It's next week. You can always come back next week. Just get out of there. Go to something else. Don't disrupt these guys' training. And don't try and, you know, half do it. Say, yeah, give us half the ice and you can just have half. If they've booked the entire rink, they're going to need the entire rink. I mean, come on. That's only fair. And now moving on to our second story of today's episode. He was white like everyone else. The other day, I was driving around town getting errands done. One of those was to get a new controller for my PC. I've got a friend who works at the GameStop in town, so I swung by. As I'm entering, I notice a woman with her child standing front and center at the counter with my friend at the register. I start to tune into the conversation. After all of this happened, my friend filled me in on the details. So I'll start right before I entered. The woman said, I'd like to get my money back for this game. My husband bought it from here last week, but it isn't the actual game my son wanted. Now, my friend who was working behind the register said, sure thing. The game was still in plastic wrap unopened and he started the process. Do you have the receipt for this purchase? No, why would I need that? It's 2021. Everything should be digital now. You should have a record of it. Uh, Yeah, that isn't something I have. Do you have a reward card with us? It would show the purchase. Karen takes out her reward card. My friend checks it and only sees the initial activation of the card on her account. This is also about the time I entered the store. I'm sorry, this doesn't have a purchase for this game. Well, it was taken out of my credit card. She then takes out her phone and shows my friend her full purchase history of her credit card. See, I made a purchase on my card. 
My friend visibly uncomfortably glances at the phone and sees an unitemized purchase at that store for a lot more than the purchase of a single game. I'm sorry, this doesn't show this game's purchase, just that this card was used to make a large purchase here, and I don't think I could use this as proof anyway. What I can do is put the amount on a rewards card for store credits. Now, this is when the Karen starts to raise her voice. What do you mean? So because I spent more money here, I'm getting screwed? I want my money back. This is ridiculous. I want to speak to your manager. My friend informs her that there is no manager in the store, that they are the only current employee on site. She doesn't take that news very well, obviously. Then who do you call? You must have someone to call if this place blows up. My friend then begins to call local stores for their manager or see if one of the district managers happens to be there. Unfortunately, none pick up. I'm sorry, mom. I can't get a hold of another store's manager and our district manager is quarantined due to COVID. Why can't you call them then? If they're quarantined, all they should be doing is answering the phone. All I want is my money back. Okay, look, if I knew who you bought the game from, maybe I could verify it. Do you recall the employee's name? I don't. He was white like everyone else that lives in the state. Oh, some guy, I don't know. Why would I need a physical receipt? It's 2021. Nothing should be physical. Look it up on your computer. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. The most I can do for you is give you the store credits. I had by now decided that I would stay in the store to keep an eye on things and ensure she didn't accuse my friend of anything, as well as keep an eye on the child who was not being attended to and was just wandering the store. Mind you, her son was just hanging out, seemingly unbothered by the fits his mother was causing. However, I tuned out the conversation as an advertisement for a game came on the store TV that made it very hard not to laugh at the parallel. The advertisement went, when someone thinks they're in the right, that's when the real cruelty in people starts to come out. So, what do you say? Are you really right? When I tuned back in, Karen was accepting the store credit in a tone as if she'd won the argument. She then went on a rant about this all being her husband's fault and that the store should be more open about options to return products. She took the digital currency and left with her son, who'd not said a word the entire time. My friend then turned and gave me an exasperated sigh. I was so done. I didn't even bother to ask if her or her husband had signed up for digital receipts. I mean, it's 2021 after all, right? Oh my God, guys, look, I'll be completely honest. If I was the employee in that situation, and look, I've said this multiple times now, I don't think that my sort of personality would do very well in retail dealing with customers like this. But honestly, you put me in that situation. I, generally, I should do that for a video. Go and work a day in retail and see what sort of customers, you know, come about because I don't think I'd do very well there at all. Pretty much what I'm saying is I think I'd lose my temper and lose my head and just say, you know what, I can't be bothered with this and just leave and tell the Karen to just get out of the store because like, how can you deal with someone like this? It's 2021 after all, you know? So uh, as the Karen says, we're in modern times now. You should realize that of course you're going to need some form of proof of a purchase. Receipts are still a thing. I mean, come on, what do you expect this person to do? Say, oh yeah, I remember your face from that time two weeks ago when your husband bought this. Like, it doesn't make any sense. How are they going to know that? It's just, a, it's just a mess, realistically. And I feel bad for the employee. And I honestly feel bad for the kid because you know what is mad about the kid, yeah? Their lack of reality action is very telling because it just shows to me that um their mum does this sort of thing on the regular take me for example if i'm with my mum and um she's a pretty normal lady and she goes up and starts you know shouting at a, a store employee i'm taking note of that i'm going to myself what is going on here i'm not just wandering around the store willy-nilly just you know looking at the games i'll be getting involved even if i was like five i'd be like what is going on my mum's doing something that is out of the ordinary and the whole point is the kid doesn't care and is so oblivious to the fact that his mum's just ranting and just like you know what it's completely normal for me let's move on i feel bad for the kid the employee and ultimately every woman called karen because they're being tarnished by people like this you hit my kid with a snowball during a snowball fight so my friend had this happen to him and wanted me to share it here i will talk from his perspective throughout for context i'm at a snowball fight and i'm hiding behind a snow mound i see a kid sneak around the mound so i hit him with a snowball he cries and runs home I don't really think much of it, so I keep playing and tell my friend on my team. He just laughs and we play peacefully for about three minutes. Then the kid's entitled mum comes up to me. Why did you hit my kid with a snowball? Uh, mum, this is a this is a snowball fight. What are you talking about? But why did 
did you target my poor angel? She gestured towards her son. I didn't, mom. He was about to hit me with a snowball himself. This is abuse. The police will hear about this and I'll see you in court. She then storms off and is stopped by my friend's parents. It was his house. What is going on? My friend then explains everything. You raised such an effing rude by child. And then the entire mum is just forced to leave. Well, look, if you ask me, if there's one place you're allowed to throw a snowball at someone with, with no repercussions, surely it's in a snowball fight. I mean, <laughs> how can you cry about getting hit with a snowball in a snowball fight? Y- you know what you signed up to do, you know? Get hit with snowballs. It's kind of in the name. But yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe this person just doesn't like getting hit with snowballs and-, and this was their way of finding out. No more snowball fights for you in future, I guess. Now moving on to our next story. My mum and stepdad stopped a class of kids from ever having hot chocolate again. So, I was making a delicious cup of hot chocolate on my own earlier, and it reminded me of the following story. Uh, I think this belongs here. I'm not quite sure. I'll be the judge of that, alright? So don't worry about that. A few side notes before I begin for all the folks that don't live in the UK, aka losers, by the way. Uh, Anyway, I better not say that. Firstly, year six is the final year in primary school. For Americans, I think that's like your version of middle school. I'm not sure though. No, neither am I. I'm sorry. But year six should be, what, 11 years old. Secondly, in my primary school, the deaf students had their own classroom for each year for extra support. They would still be included in our class projects and main subjects, English, maths and science, but they had their own classroom for other subjects so they had more support. In my year, as there were three deaf kids, a couple of kids from the main class could go into the deaf class for extra support for them and so the deaf kids didn't feel as isolated. Thirdly, green and black chocolate is very expensive. Good quality chocolate. It's around £2 a bar in shops. What's that? $3. It's very rich depending on the percentage of cocoa in it. You can get different percentages of cocoa and that would be how strong it is. So 85% cocoa would be stronger than 80% cocoa. My mum loves green and blacks, by the way. Now, onto the story. The entitled mum in this story is actually my mum. Oh god, that is not a good sign. And entitled stepdad is my stepdad. Okay, here we go. So, when I was in year six, me and another girl were in the deaf class with the deaf kids. In our school, we were allowed to call our teachers by their first names. Not every primary school is like this. Most actually go by surnames. So, the deaf kids teacher was a lovely Greek woman. We will call her nice teacher. Now she was a very enthusiastic teacher. Once a week, she would make us students in the smaller class hot chocolates as a treat. It was the best hot chocolate I had ever had. Well, one week, our nice teacher asked us students to chip in with ingredients. She gave each student an item to get and I had the task of getting the chocolates. However, she specifically asked me to get the green and black chocolate at 85%. After school that day, I asked my entitled mum and entitled stepdad when we were next going shopping. They both said they weren't sure. The next day, my mum said shopping was getting done whilst me and my brother were at school. He's three years younger than me. So I asked her about the chocolate. She said no, as it was too expensive. She then asked why I needed it, so I told her. Her and my entitled stepdad exploded. They said they weren't paying for it and we can just use cheap chocolate. I explained that I was asked specifically to get that chocolate as it's what our teacher used, but my entitled stepdad and mum weren't having any of it. Instead of going shopping, they actually called a meeting with the head teacher, deputy head, and my nice teacher. I don't know what exactly happened in that meeting, but when it was over, the nice teacher came back into the classroom in tears. I knew what had happened. She stood in front of the very small class and told us all that due to a complaint, we weren't allowed to have hot chocolate ever again. I felt awful. I knew it was because of my parents. Just as lunch was beginning, she pulled me aside and told the other kids to leave. She told me that my entitled mum and entitled stepdad complained. And she said because it really upset her, she actually didn't want me in her class anymore. She said she would keep Jess, but she will exchange me for another kid. I got so upset. I was only 10 years old at the time. I enjoyed being in her class. She was actually the reason I got so into Greek mythology. That is what she taught us in history. As far as I'm aware, all the time she was still at the school, she never made hot chocolate for the students ever again. 
Oh, and don't worry. When I went to secondary school, my entitled mum and stepdad were exactly the same. Whenever we had food tech, they would always moan about buying the ingredients. And if you didn't have the ingredients, you had to give a couple of pounds to the teacher to be able to use their ingredients. Well, my entitled stepdad and entitled mum refused to do that too. They had so many meetings with teachers and it actually resulted in me being kicked out of food tech classes. As I said, I'm not sure if this belongs here. My boyfriend said that my entitled mum and entitled stepdad were being entitled a bit as they stopped the whole class from having it. But I'm honestly not sure. Wait, OP, are you serious? <laughs> yes, clearly they're being entitled. I mean, they're literally not willing to pay, what, two pounds? Which, by the way, it's not a lot of money, is it? You can afford to pay two pounds on a bit of chocolate for your entire class. They're not giving two pounds of their own money away to enable a teacher to actually, you know, reward her students for great work, make the students like the teacher more and enjoy being at school. Like, yes, that is so entitled. You're literally ruining so many people's days, let alone your own child. You know, OP now at 10 years old is being told to leave the class because this teacher hates her parents so much. Imagine that as a 10 year old, that would screw you up in your head. And that is only because of your entitled parents not wanting to fork out literally $3, two pounds. Seriously, of course they're entitled. Madness. Uh, what's more, you know, when, when you go to secondary school, yeah, and you're doing food tech, which obviously involves making food, you're going to need to spend some money on ingredients. True, that's, you know, part and parcel, you know, that's in the memo when you do food tech, but you're going to need to have some ingredients. And uh, maybe some schools provide all the ingredients for you, but surely uh, the majority you have to pay, uh, you would think, right? It's because otherwise who else is going to pay? So why are they not paying for the food tech ingredients that you need to do your schoolwork? It's like not paying for an A4 pad of paper so you literally can't write anything down. It's, that equi it's the equivalent of that, in my opinion. It's just mad. Um, yeah, no wonder you were kicked out, OP. Obviously, it wasn't your fault, but clearly it was your entitled parents' fault. 100% they are entitled. Now, moving on to our third story. Entitled mum accuses us of practicing Satanism for celebrating Halloween. So for a little background, I am a 20-year-old female and me and my mum live in Argentina. Now, we run a little English institute in our neighborhood. Not many students, roughly 25 to 30. Every year, we like to teach our students about the different festivities and holidays celebrated in America. You know, Thanksgiving, St. Patrick's, Halloween. They get to decorate the classroom and we have little parties where they bring snacks and play holiday-related games. It is so much fun and they love learning about American culture. Their favorite holiday is, of course, Halloween. They get to dress up and we give them sweets. We've been doing it for years and never had any issues. That is, until the last October 31st. The kids had dressed as princesses and superheroes and were decorating with cute little bats and pumpkins. Nothing creepy. We were having a good time until lo and behold, appeared the most terrifying creature known to mankind. No, not a devil, not a zombie, not Dracula, not any other Halloween creature I can think of off the top of my head right now whilst I'm recording this. An entitled mother, the most terrifying creature of all. Guys, quickly, drop a like on this video if for next Halloween you want to see me, you know, dress up as an entitled mother and make a video in an entitled mother, a Karen costume. Like this video, comment down below. Let's see how many likes we get. Anyway, she barged into the classroom without knocking or even saying hello while dragging her daughter by the arm and starts yelling at me to get the person in charge. Trembling in fear, I scrambled quickly to get my mother. The conversation went something like this. My mother said, Hello, entitled mum. What can I do for you? Now shut up and listen to me, you little Satan lover. I ex excuse me? You heard me. What kind of establishment teaches children about Satan and how to adore the devil by forcing it down their throats on a foreign evil holiday? Mom, Halloween has nothing to do with Satan. BS. I know what I'm talking about. I read it on the internet. You and your daughter are practicing Satanism. EM, if you calm down, I can easily explain to you what Halloween is about. No, I will not allow you to feed my daughter lies and poison her mind with your darkness. At this point, the poor kid looked like she wanted to disappear into the depths of the earth. The other children and I could do nothing but just stare in horror. In case you haven't realized, this is a Catholic country. If you don't like it, you can easily go back to that country of brutes. My mum was too dumbfounded by this crazy woman's ignorance to even respond anymore. I pay you every month, so I demand you cancel this madness or I will be taking my daughter to another institute. I'm sorry, but other kids are having fun and enjoying themselves. I'm not going to cancel Halloween for them just because one person doesn't like it. 
At this point, the entitled mum goes red and starts screaming at the top of her lungs while violently yanking at her poor kid's arm towards the door. I will sue you. I will notify the police and tell my church that there are Satanists in town. I swear I will make sure you and your female dog of a daughter never teach again. She slams the door on her way out. Never saw her or her daughter again. And I have to say, I'm relieved. Though I do feel sorry for that poor child. She may not be able to ever celebrate Halloween, but she sure knows what it's like to live with the devil. Oh yeah, classy little line there at the end, OP. As I said, halfway through the story, I mean, what is worse than an entitled parent? Genuinely nothing. I mean, seriously. Uh, Again, if you do want to see me dress up as a Karen, you know, get the wig, whack a bit of makeup on. Am I even saying, am I really saying this though? But am I, you know, I am. If you want to see it, yeah, drop a like. Um, I'm going to set a big like guard because that involves, like dressing up as a Karen involves putting in like clip on earrings probably whacking some mascara you know that the whole whatever mile how many miles it is in the phrase um so yeah let's go for 15k likes I- i'm tempted to go 20 you know I fi- I fi- I'll-, I'll-, I'll keep it low so i'll give you guys a chance Fifteen thousand likes on this video yeah and i will do next october oh this is terrible next october i will film a video in a full karen costume with makeup with everything yeah Fifteen thousand. Is, is that too low? 15,000 guys. There you go. 15,000 likes and I'll do it. It's up to you and it's up to you to keep on reminding me if we come if we come close as well. I know you can do it, but I kind of don't want you to do it. So if you wouldn't mind just, you know, now unliking the like button, that'd be great. Appreciate it. Let's move on. Now moving on to our final story. Entitled mother messes up big at the ER. As I was sitting in the waiting room at the ER, there was a young girl about 10 by her looks. She was also totally bald and didn't hide it. Overhearing her mum, I came to find out she has cancer and was getting ready for her chemo treatments. At this hospital, they have service dogs meant to calm kids down when they get scared. The dog they let her take care of was only small. I have no idea what breed, sorry. She was on the gurney, waiting her turn, happily petting the dog. This is when an entitled mum joins the story. She walks right up to the counter with her little girl who was crying. The entitled mum said she fell off the swing set and got a black eye. She was told to take a seat and wait until cooled. As she was walking to sit down, her daughter spots the dog and squeals. She wants to pet the puppy. The young girl's mother tried to explain that the dog was a special dog and her daughter was taking care of him and he was taking care of her and to please not touch the dog. The entitled mum did not like this and started at a very high volume where everyone could hear saying, my baby wants to pet the mutt. She is going to pet the mutt and put her hands on her hips like she'd already won the fight. The entitled mum then tried to reach over the young girl's mother to take the dog. But when she did this, she pulled the IV drip out of the girl's arm, landing it directly on her mother. I'm not sure about the dog, but it yelped so loud, so I assume she did as well. At this hospital, they don't just have security, but there is a police officer stationed there as well. Both security and the cop grabbed the entitled mum and put her to the floor hard. She landed face first on the big rubber mats they have at the doors. In seconds, she was cuffed and hauled into the security room, the whole time screaming about all the things an angry entitled mum tends to scream about. Her daughter was taken to a quiet room with a nice nurse, while other nurses worked on getting the poor young girl hooked back up to everything. The poor little dog was so scared, he became useless to the girl. Lucky they have more than one dog on site at all times. This time, they brought her a German Shepherd. After I was seen and on my way out, I saw one of the security guys and asked him how things ended since I was seeing the doctor. He laughed and said she got trespassed from the hospital and its property, resisting arrest, assault on the cop, I guess she scratched his face enough to make it bleed, interfering with a service animal while it is on duty, assault on the young girl and her mother. If there was more, I can't remember. I just wish I was there when they took her out screaming and kicking. To be honest with you guys, it seems a bit weird that, you know, someone can literally just walk into a hospital, the ER in this situation, and instantly be able to be in contact with someone that is on an IV drip and is about to have chemotherapy. Do you you not think? Like, surely, normally, if you're going to have chemotherapy, you wouldn't sit in a normal waiting area waiting to have the chemo, you know what I mean? Like, with with a drip in. Wouldn't you be, like, on your own bed somewhere, maybe in, like, another room with other people that are also waiting? I don't really know how it works, I'll be honest. So please enlighten me in the comments down below. 
what I'm pretty much saying is it seems weird that someone can come in with a black eye and instantly, you know, you know, be in contact with someone that, that is about to go through chemotherapy and do something horrible like this. I imagine that, you know, this sort of thing doesn't happen too often where an entitled mum would attack a, a, a girl that is on, about to have chemo and is on a drip, I presume. So I assume that the hospital don't normally, you know, account for this sort of thing or expect this sort of thing to happen. But still, you never know. It's just a bit weird that, um, you know, you'd, you'd be allowed to be in contact with someone like this, in my opinion, at this stage of coming into a hospital with just a black eye. I don't know. There's a reason I don't work in hospitals because clearly I'm clueless. So yeah, if anyone watching this does work in a hospital, please let me know how that could possibly have happened. It seems a little bit weird to me, but other than that, yeah, great story. I enjoyed this entitled mum getting absolutely flattened by the security guard and the police officer. And yes, like OP, I would have loved to see that in the flesh. I need a picture, you idiots. This happened yesterday on Christmas Day. So we all went to our cousin's house for Christmas. He has a wife and an adorable little baby who gets thoroughly spoilt by everyone who meets him. Over the last couple of years, the guy's recently done very well in his job and has therefore bought some very expensive things, including a flat in central London. He's also a car guy, as am I, and bought a few items that the two of us have always fantasized over. These include an Aston Martin DBS and a 1969 Ford Mustang. With COVID-19, etc., I haven't seen my very well-off cousin in a long time. And in that time, he bought the Mustang. When we arrived, I immediately asked to see the Stang and possibly even go for a drive in it. We did, and it was indistinguishable from heaven. The throaty growl, the downshifts, the meaty steering wheel. It looked like something hell spat back out. It was a bloody museum piece. Now on to the arrival of the entitled mother. Now, my cousin bought a flat that came with its own underground parking spots. It wasn't exactly private in the sense that only my cousin had access, but it did have decent security measures and was only open to residents of the building. Whilst we idled back to our designated spot, we noticed a young teenager and her mother take an interest in the car. My cousin is a large show-off, so he revved the engine slightly as he stepped out. The entitled mum approached us with her phone out. Hey, sorry to bother you, but can my daughter take a picture with the car? Sure, said my cousin. Just be careful not to lean on the bonnet or anything. No, no, we meant my daughter would be sitting inside the car with the door open and holding the keys in her hand. Gee, what a jump. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, but this is of great personal importance to me. I can't let that happen, but I am more than happy for you to take pictures as long as they are front on. Excuse me? It's not like we're going to drive off. Just give us the keys. You can watch from the side. As she said this, she made a motion to move towards the passenger door. This car is a bit of a dream come true for both me and my cousin. So I wasn't just going to stand there silently. I moved to position myself in between her and the door. Young man, you will move right this instant. It's my right to take pictures whenever and wherever I want to, as I have a property here. And so does my cousin. Please, respect his wishes. You can still take a picture, just not sitting inside the car. By this point, there was a mini commotion caused, enough to draw the attention of the security guard. Mom, I will have to ask you to leave the premises or return to your residence. The entitled mum lost it. She started screaming at the security guard, at my cousin, at me, and just generally screaming. It's too long to include here, but it involves some choice words pertaining to immigrants. My family is British Indian, to spoil children getting their way all the time, and to the disrespect shown by the younger generation. In the end, another security guard came and helped the woman leave. I do feel bad for the woman's daughter. She was just in the sidelines the entire time. I don't think she really wanted to press the issue. Her mum just did it for her. All of this, to be fair, became a funny Christmas story. And within the hour, I was back to playing with my cousin's baby. Wait, wait. So you're telling me that one of the entitled mum's main points of contention here was she was angry that, you know, young, spoiled kids get their way their entire time and need to learn to respect adults. But what was she asking? She was asking for her kid probably spoilt to be put in this car that isn't even hers i mean just take the photo outside the car what difference does it make being in the car or not i mean if you're in the car you're probably just trying to fake that you own it when clearly you don't own it so maybe she was just gonna like post it all over social media and, and try and flaunt the car that her daughter or her clearly doesn't own for whatever reason i don't really get that clout chasing maybe who knows um but yeah just stand next to the car the guy's been so nice your cousin op has been so nice 
to let this person take a car because most people would be like, you know what? Nah, it's my car, man. I don't need to ruin it. But yeah, take the photo with the car. You should be, you know, happy that you have that opportunity and move on. Now moving on to our next story. Entitled parent thinks I should give her money. So in my late 20s, I was still living with my parents and everyone at my job knew this. It was a really small company. One day, as myself and another co-worker of mine, the entitled parent of this story, were chilling in our room eating, she asked to borrow $20. She told me that her ex-husband claimed she never took him for child support, didn't send money, that she needed to get her son to school, and on and on. I know I shouldn't have done it, but I knew that she was falling on hard times. I lent it to her and told her I needed it back the next week, which she did repay. Now, that same week was also our pay week. She says to me, Hey, OP? Yes? Can I borrow $100 now? No. Why? You let me borrow 20 and I paid it back. Yeah, but 20 is different from 100. It's a hard no. We literally just got paid today. Well, unlike you, I don't live at home like a spoiled child. I have bills and I have a kid with autism and you're taking food out of his mouth. First off, my money is my money. I'm sorry that your kid has autism, but that doesn't have anything to do with me. Go pick up extra hours if you need the money, but don't ask me. After that exchange, she then gave me the silent treatment. She was later removed from the room. I wish I could say that's where it ended, but it didn't. So fast forward a few weeks later. So I was the head of the room that she used to be in. So I made the calendar, handled the fundraiser money, and so on. This is very important to the rest of the story. Each Friday, I counted the room's money and wrote down how much we had. Usually somewhere in the week or over the weekend, someone went and bought different supplies for the room. Now, one Friday, I had a horrible migraine while I was counting, but I did what I usually did. I took money to buy supplies over the weekend and had already told the other co-workers that worked in the room with me. After I took the supply money out, I counted the remaining money twice and logged everything in. When Monday arrived, the first thing I did was to take the change out and place it into our lockbox. I counted everything, but the total was way off. Of course, I blamed myself because I knew I had a migraine last Friday, so I assumed I counted wrong, but I still told another co-worker. She recounted and got the same number. We went to our manager and explained everything. She said she would keep the lockbox for a few days. When she gave it back, nothing was missing. So we put it back in our room and left for the day. The very next day, we came back and it was short once again. And another room's money was short as well. At that point, my manager and her boss decided to do a mini stakeout. I really can't remember how long it took them to find who it was. But when they did, it was the entitled parents. When she was getting fired, they said she kept yelling, If OP would have just given me the $100, I wouldn't have had to do this. So, till this day, I really wasn't sure if she was trying to frame me for stealing or what. Oh, no, no, no. She wasn't trying to frame me from stealing. I'm pretty sure she was saying if you had just paid her the $100, then she wouldn't have had to steal from the company, which maybe is right. But um, it still makes no sense. You're stealing from the company. Now, the thing is, right, if someone asks for $20 and, you know, it's like $20, it's like not, not loads of money. Obviously, it's a significant amount, but it's not loads. Yeah, fair enough. Pay them, you know, lend it to them um, and get it back. If they pay you back, lovely stuff. If not, it's a shame, but it's $20. It's not the end of the world. If they ask you for 100 though, that is kind of getting, you know, to the limits, isn't it? It's like, that's a lot of money to lend. So I can completely understand, OP, why you didn't do that. Now, even if you had done that in that situation, and clearly this person is annoyed that you didn't do that, what about next time, you know? Even if she did pay the $100 back, the fact that it was on payment day is very, very worrying, obviously. And, uh, you know, what would she ask for next time? A grand? Like, it's just going to keep going. So yes, you had to put your foot down. Obviously, you did the right thing in not lending her the money. And <laughs> she's stupid enough to steal from the company she works for is like how dumb are you how fraudulent can you be i mean in the literal sense of the word fraud she is one pretty insane um yeah she had to go i'm so sorry but she had to go oh and by the way before we get into our third story don't worry my hair is going to grow in length at the end of it so stick around and you'll see what i mean now for our third story mother decides it's time i get married to some random guy and not my boyfriend oh boy i finally get a chance to show off my parents entitlements This one was so fun to find out about. A little necessary background. I'm currently no contact with my parents and siblings and have been for over a year. Extended family I am okay with and spend a lot of time with. 
I currently live with my boyfriend, which my entire family is aware of, but don't know much about. We are also Desi, Indian. My boyfriend, though, is white. For Christmas, I visited my aunt and cousins to drop off presents. It was a socially distance exchange, but I stayed a while to chat about things. Whenever I see my aunt, she tends to give me important updates about my parents and immediate family. For example, I knew my mum broke her arm or that my brother and his wife moved closer to home. Things like that. So my aunt had a little tidbit she wanted to share with me before I headed out. So your mum has a proposal for you. Apparently, a family friend had reached out to my mother, not knowing about our no contact situation and thought that her son would have been a perfect match for me. I literally know nothing about this guy, but my mother apparently rushed ahead, agreeing with this friend. She sent my photo and information and that friend loved me, apparently. My mother then called my aunt, sent her the guy's photo and information and cried saying she didn't know how to get in contact with me to share the good news. And would she reach out to me and show the photo? My mother kept stressing that he's a good boy from a good family. And we know this person and that person and how it'd be a great match. And he lives in Chicago so I could be under my sister's nose. One of my sisters lives in Chicago while married. And oh, wouldn't it be so wonderful? My aunt responded with, "Mm mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, sure, Mm mm-hmm, and just didn't really give my mother an opinion. While speaking to my aunt about this, I was incredulous. She is all for mending my relationship with my family, but understands and respects my space. My aunt is well aware that my boyfriend and I live together, so she took what my mother said with a grain of salt, but oh my god. I'm just appalled by my mother and what she thinks is okay to say about me to other people. You see, the thing I don't get with this story is if you are no contact with your mum, I'm sure your mum can realize that you're no contact, right? It's not like a one way, no contact relationship. Like you're her daughter. You've got no contact. Why is she then still caring about who you're marrying? That's what I don't understand. Like, why does it even matter to her anymore? If her own daughter has said, I don't actually want to see you again in my life, then why is she still trying to find you a partner for life? I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. The fact that she doesn't know that you have a boyfriend and is like, oh yes, let me find this man for you. It just shows that your relationship has completely broken down, probably because you are non-contact, obviously. So yeah, as I say, I just don't know why she's even getting involved. I love that your aunt was just like, yeah, I'm not going to tell her that she's got a boyfriend. I'm just going to, you know, let all this information go and say, oh yeah, it sounds amazing. I'll definitely pass this on with the highest regard and make sure your daughter does this. What a load of rubbish. Entitled Kid thinks he can get a custom-built PC for 80 bucks. Has this happened to anyone who owns a PC building service on Facebook? So a week ago, I got a message from someone's kid asking for a PC. So I tell him what I tell everybody and we got to the part of price. When I told the kid the amount, he said, okay, I'll send it in five minutes. So five minutes later, I got a PayPal notification saying someone sent me $80. I messaged him back saying, thanks, but when are you going to send the amount of money needed to get the parts for the PC? Nothing. So I waited for five minutes and forgot about it. Now, it wasn't until yesterday that I got an answer back asking when the PC will be delivered. I said, you didn't even pay for the PC. You paid for the labor. So after I sent that, the kid went crazy and started cursing me out. I just didn't even answer and refunded the $80. Wait, wait, so you're legit telling me that this kid actually thought that the price of a custom-built PC was $80? I mean, did he think it was $80 for the whole thing? Or did he think that it was $80 for the labor, as you said, but then you, OP, would have to go and actually buy the individual parts of the PC, put them all together for the $80, sure, and then give them all to this kid for free? I don't know, but $80 for a custom-built PC? Uh, Yeah, not on this planet. Now moving on to our second post. Entitled parent left his kid alone at the airport. Back when I used to work at an airport, I often dealt with kids traveling without parents. This was a paid service called Unaccompanied Minors, available to everyone under 18, but mandatory to kids under the age of 12 who traveled alone. The rule is that the parent or guardian or whoever escorts the kids, for the sake of clarity, I'll just refer to them all as parents from this point, has to stay at the airport until the plane is in the air. This was in case the flight was cancelled, because the paid service did not cover anyone staying with the kid until the next flight. The most extreme case would obviously be that there'd be no flight available that day anymore, in which case the kid would have to go home and come back the next day. 
Obviously, most parents were fine with going to the gate with their kids and staying until the very last minute. In all my years, I only had trouble with one entitled dad. He came to the business counter with his child, which was already a big no-no, as checking in unsupervised kids takes longer than average, and the business counter was, well, supposed to be a fast lane for business class and high-tier passengers. The dad chose his own gold card, so I bit back my annoyance and asked the person next to me to check in my queue until I was done. I gave the dad all the forms he had to fill in, which already annoyed him. The kid was obviously under 10 and seemed very sweet. She looked relaxed and I guess she had done this plenty of times. Over the years, you learn to spot the ones who are not accustomed to traveling alone. The dad gave me back the forms and asked, so where do I leave her? I got a bit confused, but told him, like always, that he had to stay at the airport until the plane was in the air. What? No, I paid for her to be accompanied. Well, yeah, from the gate to the plane and from the plane to arrivals. I have a meeting in a town like three hours away. I can't stay with her. Sir, what if the flight is cancelled? We'd have to call you back. She'd stay here with you, wouldn't she? That's not a possibility. Sir, you agree to the terms when you pay. I didn't pay for this. Her mother did. And she told me I could just leave the kid with you. At this point, the kid started crying. Daddy, please come with me. Don't start. You like flying, don't you? Mum always comes with me. I don't care. I don't have the time. I want to speak to your manager. While we waited for my supervisor, we heard an announcement through the loudspeakers about a car in the no parking zone. The entitled dad went shit and ran away, leaving his daughter at my counter. She started crying in earnest and I panicked that the dad was taking this opportunity to bail. My supervisor came, we closed my counter completely, the queue was almost empty at this point, and took the kid aside to talk over our options, hoping that the dad would come back. After five minutes, and no dad later, we tried to call him. His number was one of the papers he signed. No answer. Then we tried the mum, whose contact info was also on the papers. She said she'd call the dad and ask if there was any way we could take the kid to the gate if he didn't appear, if she promised she'd be there in about 30 minutes. We told her that there was still plenty of time before the flight left and they could skip the security queue so we could make a little exception and wait for her at the check-in with the kid, but that we wouldn't let the kid go to the gate without her parents. The mother was understanding and told us that either she or the dad would be there soon. A few minutes later, the dad did come back, arguing over the phone with who we assumed was the mum. He yanked the daughter by her arm and took her through security. We felt bad, but thought that was that. No. I went back to my counter to finish the check-in and then got a call from the gate, telling me that the dad had left the kid with them. Obviously, there's a lot to do before a flight leaves, so they couldn't really look after her, and they asked if I could try to see him and tell him to come back. I didn't manage to spot him and my supervisor told me to go sit with the kid while she again called the mum. My shift was about to end so I didn't have to hurry anywhere except home and I agreed to work a little overtime. The kid was in tears and my shift manager had to get involved. While my supervisor called the mum, the shift manager called the airline asking if we could allow the kid on the flight if there's no parent present when the flight leaves. We were a ground handling company and did not directly work for any airline. They told us straight up no. Fortunately, I then get a call from my supervisor telling me that the mum had arrived. To make things easier at the security, me and the kid went back to check-in. The mum signed new forms and escorted the kid through security again. The kid made the flight fine and it left on time. The mum was so embarrassed about the whole incident, but didn't really stay to explain the dad's behavior. And well, it wasn't really our business anymore. She did say this was the first and last time the dad would ever escort the kid and thanked us for doing all we could. She was obviously upset and overwhelmed, but we're not in a country where we share more than we have to. So it was not surprising that she just left after the thank you. I had to stay a while longer to write an incident report and got home absolutely exhausted. 
Yeah, I mean, it was pretty clear from the start of this story that this was always going to be an issue with this entitled dad. Clearly, I think he just thinks, you know, that he's too important to even be seen taking his thoughts to the airport for a flight. And that was, that's always been his wife's job, you know. Why is he doing this? He's got important meetings to go to. Wait, what? I have to stay with her for, for a number of hours because it's legal? I'm not doing that. No, no, I'm not doing that. I'm leaving. I'm out of here. It's kind of just like a crazy, selfish, um, I, I guess, opinion to have of the whole situation. Yeah, he clearly thinks he's more important than, than anyone else. More important than UOP. More important than his daughter. More important than his wife. More important than everyone. Kind of, uh, if I'm being completely honest. And yeah, at least his wife is kind of, you know, a normal person and is, is a more generous person and doesn't mind helping her kid fly. <laughs> But yeah, crazy person, crazy geese. And um, I honestly don't know what would have happened in that situation had the mum not got involved. You would literally have had to call the police, right? Mental. Does this dad want the police to get involved? I wouldn't, but you know, he clearly doesn't care. Now moving on to our final post. My entitled neighbour just demanded her garbage bag or compensation. I just came inside from this confrontation. Although apparently it started months ago and I just didn't know it. Now, I moved to this neighborhood about a year and a half ago. It was bigger than my old place, so I wanted a few more pieces of furniture and also wanted to swap out a few pieces. I'm too cheap to buy new for the most part. Soft furnishings too big to go in the washing machine are the only things I usually buy new, so I upcycle and refinish most of my furniture. I do this mostly in my garage, but any spraying I do in the front yard on the mulch. Most of the neighbours had stopped at some point to welcome me or talk about my projects. A few had asked if I took orders. I told them I do and at a pretty low cost because I don't do professional quality. But it would have to wait a little bit as I wanted to finish my personal projects first. One of the neighbours who asked was the neighbour lady across the street. When I gave her my answer, she sort of sniffed and said, fine. This was almost a year ago. A few months ago was the yearly large trash pickup, where you can put almost anything on the curb and the city will take it to the dump for you. It's a great time to pick up new pieces. My neighbor lady had a pile of actually trashed items out, but as I was working in the garage, I saw her lug a console slash entry table to the curb. It looked beat up, but not broken, and it was one of the pieces I was actually looking for. I headed over. It was pretty beat up as suspected. The finish was scratched to heck. A pet had chewed one of the legs, but it was a solid piece. So I asked if I could have it. The lady said, of course. So I got my dolly and stashed it in my garage. It sat in the garage for a few months, but last weekend I decided to work on it. I sand down and refinished most pieces, but after assessing the condition of the wood, I decided I was just going to paint this piece, as the patching for the damage would be too visible through a stain. I stripped and sanded the piece down and fixed the damage. Today, I got it out and painted it in the front yard. It's a navy colour and I'm pretty happy with how it's going to turn out. Just as I was finishing putting away all the tools and paint though, my neighbour lady came marching across the street. I thought she would just admire it, as people like seeing their old trash transformed. But instead, she said, I've decided that I don't want to give you this table, so I'm going to come get it when it's done drying. No, I said. You gave it to me. It's mine, and I put in a fair amount of time and money to refinish it. But it's mine! You stole it from me, and I want it back! No, it's now mine. If you want it back, it will be $150. <gasps> what? But it's trash now. You ruined it. I thought you were going to refinish it. Then why do you want it back? Plus, I like it like this. Any other refinishing would have taken too long and cost too much. Fine. If you want to keep it, I'll take $200 for it so I can buy a new one. No, you said I could take it from your trash pile. I even asked you before taking it. It's mine now. I'll just come and take it while you sleep then. For context, I usually leave pieces in the yard overnight to dry. Okay then, fine. I guess I'll just take it inside now. I then grabbed the leg of the table and proceeded to drag it into the garage. The neighbor lady reached out to stop me, but recoiled once she realized it was still wet. I pulled it in and waved at her with my now paint-covered hand as the door closed. It was a bit petty, and my hand is covered in paint, spray paint so it doesn't come off easily, and I will have to redo the leg, but it was worth it for the look on her face. Thinking back as I typed this, I think this might have been her plan all along. Get me to take it, refinish it, and demand it back. 
I normally would have charged like 30 to 40 dollars to refinish something like that But because she tried to trick me the price more than tripled and she ended up with nothing Of course, she is still my neighbor. I'm sure i'll have more fun with her in the future Oh, OP, yeah, there is no doubt in my mind that that is exactly what this neighbor was trying to do to you. I mean, it's so obvious. It's so obvious when you're like, oh, yes, I will put this out right on my, well, right on my pavement, just so my neighbor who I know does up trash can see it. Then let her, you know, meddle with it, make it look amazing once again, and then buy it back off her. Or just, you know, not even buy it, just get it for free. Yeah, so obvious. Uh, it didn't work that well in this situation, lady, because once you say to someone, yes, you can have it, it's not yours anymore. That was never, ever going to work. You're so dumb. Sorry, it's just stupid. Like, it's just dumb. Just pay her a little bit of money. Pay OP a little bit of money and say, look, you know what? I know I can I can tell you're really talented here. Would you mind having a go at this? Because I'd like this piece, but obviously it's, it's seeing better days. Give it a go. Give it a little brush up. And OP would have said fine for a pretty reasonable amount of money. Do you not think, guys? But no, OP did the right thing. Uh, putting the price up astronomically because that's what you're supposed to do. OP did this for herself, not for her neighbor. Well done, OP. And neighbor, you're done. I can still see who's in the car. I work in a small liquor shop, and this happened last week, a couple of days before Christmas. An entitled son entered with his girlfriend and spent a few minutes browsing our wines and spirits. They then went into our cool room where we have our premixes, Jim Beam and Cola, for example, and our cartons of beer. All up, after about 10 minutes of browsing, they decided to get a four pack of Volker Cruises, a six pack of Jim Beam and Cola, a bottle of Southern Comfort, and a bottle of vodka. All up, it came to close to $130. I scanned the products and then asked for the ID of the boy. We have to ask for ID from anyone 25 or younger, but the legal age is 18. The guy fumbles around in his wallet, then says he cannot find it, and asks if I will accept a photo of it on his phone. I say no, I have to see the actual ID. His girlfriend then goes into her purse and pulls out her ID and shows me. She's 19 years old. I say thank you, but I still can't sell you anything as you are together and I need to see his ID The entitled son leaves the store and goes into a car parked right outside. We have clear windows I can see straight into the car He then comes back in with a piece of paper which turns out to be a high school year 12 report card from last year Why would you have that in your car? He asks whether this will do and I say no, it has to be photo ID Cue his entitled dad. His entitled dad enters the store, pulls out his wallet, and shows me his ID. I say, sorry, I can't sell to you as you are with your son. The dad starts going on about how he has worked in hotels for 20 years. He tried saying that you can sell to someone without ID if another person can vouch for the person, which is not true. He said he knows the liquor licensing laws like the back of his hand, but I still refuse to sell. His entitled son leaves the store and the entitled dad says, There, he is no longer here. You can sell to me now. I say that I still can't as I know that the two of them are together. The guy's girlfriend leaves the store at this point, leaving just the entitled dad in the store with me. The entitled dad offers to give me $20 as a bonus if I just do the transaction. I still say no. He then says that there is no reason that I can give him that says I cannot do the transaction. I start mentioning the relevant parts of the Liquor Licensing Act, and he says they are just guidelines, not law. So I bring up on my laptop some court cases I know of where people have tried challenging the fines levied when you sell to underage people. He says that is only when you are caught by the police, and again offers to buy the alcohol, and I, again, refuse. The entitled dad then goes on a tirade about this being unfair and unjust, and I am preventing them from having a fun evening. I am being racist, that one blew me as I thought they were all Australian, and that he was going to lodge a complaint about unfair selling prices. Now, enter the entitled granddad. I already knew that the entitled granddad was in the car with the others, but he comes in acting as though he isn't part of the group. He starts walking around the store, acting as though he is browsing, and eventually comes to the register. I say to him that I cannot sell to him. The entitled granddad pulls out his ID and shows it to me. I tell him that it isn't a problem with his ID. The entitled granddad then asks me what the problem is. And I tell him that the problem is that your entitled grandson doesn't have an ID. The entitled granddad tries claiming that he doesn't know who that guy is. But I then say to him that I can see straight out the window into the car where everyone was. 
He then tries to tell me that I'm mistaken, but I offer to play back footage on the stall's CCTV, showing everyone getting in and out of the same car. The entitled granddad starts saying that he is a former law enforcement, not a police officer. He knows what the laws are. He says that this is an abuse of their civil liberties. The entitled dad starts to come around to my side of the counter. I tell him to stop. The entitled dad says, just try to. At that moment, one of my regulars came in. We have a running joke between us about him being a detective, due to some things he discovered on the internet for me that I couldn't find. So, as he came in, I said, hello detective. The regular customer, now acting as a detective, said hello to me. The look on the entitled dad and the entitled granddad's faces when I said hello detective was priceless. I start talking to the regular customer about what this entitled dad and entitled granddad were doing in the store. But before I had even gotten through the first sentence, they had both hot-footed it out of the store and into the same very car. We turned and looked and watched them speed away. Honestly, guys, it's starting to feel like partway through that story became like a circus. You know, one member of the family goes in, another one goes out, and they keep rotating. It's just like, a, I don't know what's going on here. They're just subbing in for one another, each trying to do the exact same thing, knowing that it's not going to work. I don't even know why they're bothering. At that point, should you just go to another store? You would have saved so much time. Like You've wasted everyone's time here. You could have been doing something way much more valuable with your time than just trying the same technique over and over again. Imagine the entire granddad coming in there like, what? An image just acting like he wasn't involved with anyone else in his entire family who happened to be in the store oh you know what sorry you're not buying this uh, selection of alcohol anymore i'll get it how about that i'll get it and i'll get the exact same bottles that you were gonna get just by chance you know we're not together or anything don't worry about that even though we look the same this is my son and my grandson and my grandson's girlfriend don't worry about that i'll just get the same stuff oh thank you see you later like did you really think that was gonna work really don't get me wrong, it is annoying because I've had the exact same thing happen to me. When you go into a, a store and you want to buy alcohol, right? And, you know, just one person in your group doesn't have their ID and it can ruin it because obviously, you know, you have to check everyone's ID. That is policy in a lot of countries, definitely in the UK and it sounds like in Australia as well. And it can be very annoying, but, you know, it is policy and it is actually legal. You have to check everyone's ID in a group if you think they're under the age of 25, not just 18, 25 as well. So, yeah. You know, it makes sense. And uh, don't take the bribe. If you do work in a store, please don't ever take the bribe because your whole store could be could be shut down if people find out about what you've done. Um, so, OP, you obviously did the right thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know why these customers didn't realize that it just wasn't going to work. Now, moving on to our second story. Entitled parent barges into gas station, makes someone cry and calls us workers headless chickens. If today couldn't get any more worse, well, it sure did. I start my morning at a gas station at 6 a.m. My manager, who doesn't work weekends, changed the roster on Wednesday. So we had someone who wasn't meant to start till 1.30 turn up at 6. We sent him home. The guy who was meant to start at 7 didn't show up till 10.30. His previous roster had him at 12 p.m. start, not 7 a.m. And the guy who was meant to be there at 10 started at 9.30 to help us. When I got there this morning, there were three of us. The other two had started at 5 a.m. One of them had his birthday party yesterday and was high on drugs and came into work with zero sleep. When he went on his half around 8am, he didn't even come back, leaving me and one other worker to cover the shop for an hour before someone else turned up. It was busy. Once we got our third person in, the other went on his half. Our manager stuffed up by changing rosters and not telling anyone. We did manage to survive till our manager came in along with two more staff though. So... This story happened just after 1.30 p.m. today. One of the guys who started at 5 a.m. had just clocked out as he was just finished for the day. I was in the break room coming back out after having a water and one of the new employees was calling me over to deal with a customer. Hello, what seems to be the problem? Of course it was a Karen. Hello, I've been in and gotten this number to ring your manager and he isn't picking up. My daughter came in 30 minutes ago and got treated poorly. I want to speak to your manager in charge. I said I would try and find him, but it turned out he left ages ago. He came in at 11 and left at 12.30. I do apologize, but he isn't on site at the moment. Have you tried leaving a message? What? So you are telling me that there is no manager here? Are you all running around like headless chickens? I do ensure you that we are trained for what we have been doing, but anything in the office we have not. So what I'm hearing is that if there was a fire and the place burned down, well, who would you ring? When's your manager going to be in next? 
Well, we would ring the emergency line and then ring our manager on his personal phone. Our manager will be in on Monday and he doesn't work weekends. Okay, then give me his personal number. Well, I cannot do that due to privacy. Well, then where was the 5am guy who was manager today? One of the new employees mentioned the 5am guy who's our administrator. He is not a manager. The 5am guy has clocked off for the day and has gone home since he started at 5am. Also, he is not a manager. She then starts repeating the same story. What if this place burned down? Blah, blah, blah. At this point, a nice other customer gets involved. Hey, excuse me, Karen, but you can't come in here, push in front of the line and make a young girl cry. We were very busy and this nice customer had witnessed the whole thing. As soon as I heard make a young girl cry, there was only one other person working other than me who was a girl. So I knew who it was. At that moment then, I leave the Karen alone to deal with my crying co-worker as she is still trying to serve other people. The 5am guy was still in the office, but didn't want to come out because he knew the truth. The Karen's daughter did a drive off the other day and he had to do the manual fuel correction to get her to pay it. The 5am guy just said what he tells everyone with the drive off in our systems. I go back out to once again say that Karen has to call our manager and leave a message. I also pulled her up on the fact that she made one of our staff members cry and that this was the ending of her first week here. I just remember who served me. It was this man here. She says this pointing at a tall employee. But mom, he has only just started working for the day. Listen here, there is a photo at back with my daughter and my license plates. Then she tells me her number plates. I'm sorry, I cannot get that for you as it is private information on that paper and you are not the person in the photo. So due to regulations, I cannot give that to you. Well, go get it and put it right here. Then you're not handing it to me. You're just showing it. Once again, I cannot do that. It's a breach of policy. She got fed up with me following the rules and left yelling. Your manager is going to hear about this, she said. I was glad once she left. 30 minutes of saying the exact same thing is annoying. The 5am guy was still in the office. We had a talk about what happened and both of us couldn't do anything related to the store. Only our manager can. Yeah, I imagine that would be a very tough situation when you literally, you physically can't do anything else more than you were already doing. And you've got this like horrible customer who is just, you know, breathing fire at you, just being absolutely toxic and not listening to a word you're saying really. When you're literally telling them, genuinely, there's nothing more I can do here. I'm very sorry, but I don't have the power, you know, the influence. I'm not allowed to do more than just say, please call the manager, our manager, leave a message. And then he, she will, will sort it when they can. They're not working right now. And I literally can't even do the things you're asking me to do because it's not my job to i'm literally not allowed i don't know what more you can do in this situation and that honestly must be one of the worst things about working in any sort of like customer service job or a store when someone like this you're having to deal with a horrible karen like this and they're genuinely not even listening to a word you're saying just making your life horrible Guys, if you have any like little stories about your, you working in customer service or, or you know a shop like this, dealing with customers like this, drop them down below because I bet it's happened to loads of you watching right now and I want to hear your stories from hell to be honest. Now moving on to our final story. Karen doesn't wait in lines. Or does she? I am so excited to have finally had a live Karen encounter. You know one where you're not thinking later of things you should have said. I'm making lasagna tonight and needed a few ingredients, so off to the grocery store I went. I really wasn't in the mood to go out, so I was trying to get in and out of there quickly, since I only needed a few items. Throughout my shopping, I noticed a woman with her young boy who was probably about six or seven years old. I passed them a couple of times and could hear her nagging him or yelling at him. She was bumping into other shoppers without excusing herself and would huff as if the fact that she can't walk and push a cart at the same time was everyone else's fault. I got my items and headed to the checkout. There were only two lines open, but it wasn't crowded. I had only one guy in front of me and he was about halfway finished. Now, due to COVID, the store has a policy that you can't put your groceries on the belt until the belt is empty. As I was starting to put my things on the belt, I heard her coming and thought, "Uh uh-oh, please don't get in this line. I was starting to put my things on the belt and the entitled mum comes up very close, not social distancing with an overflowing car and her kid, who was playing a handheld game, completely behaving. She says, Um, I need to go first. I'm in a hurry and my son is tired and needs to go home. I'm sorry, but I'll be done in a few minutes. 
but I have a kid. Plus, we don't do lines. Well, congrats on the kid. He seems fine to me. No, no, you need to get behind me. I have a kid and he's cranky. Looks to me like mama is the one who's cranky. You're gonna need to wait your turn. Now this calls the cashier and two other nice guys in the line to start giggling. Try not to say anything. But my baby, he's ready to go and I'm going first. The cashier then said, mom, please be patient and you'll have your turn. She was first. I didn't ask for your opinion. Then one of the nice guys came in. Well, that's no way to talk to the cashier, Karen. Wait, what did you call me? That's racist. You can't call me that. Oh, I didn't realize Karen was a race. Where did Karens come from? If I'd have known that, well, I may have let you in front of me, as you are clearly superior to those of us who don't bring kids to the store. The other nice guy said, Mom, look, no one is being racist. Karen isn't a race. Yeah, but it's impolite. And you're not? Oh, that's right. Karens can say and do whatever they want without any consequences. I forgot. Well, you don't do lines. I don't tolerate people bullying me and being complete buttholes. What? You just curse in front of my son? You're in big trouble. You can't do that. Then the nice guy says, are you going to get the manager? Oh no, we better all run. By this time, everyone within earshot is laughing at her and she's starting to realize. We all know what happens when a Karen becomes self-aware. She starts screaming and stomping her feet. The cashier says, mom, please, you are disturbing the customers and causing a scene. You can start loading your groceries now, but if you continue with this, you are going to be asked to leave. But they're teasing me, and all I did was ask to go ahead of her because of my kid, who, by the way, is still being quiet. She verbally assaulted me, and he was racist by calling me Karen. What are you going to do about this? This is your last chance. One more disruption, and you're leaving. Yeah, Karen, stop disrupting, another nice guy said. Right as he said that, another cashier comes and opens the next register over and takes both the nice guys so Karen had to continue to wait her turn. She didn't end up speaking with the manager and didn't say anything when the other register was opened because I think she actually realized she wasn't going to win. I call that a victory. Yeah, no doubt, OP, that is a fat dub for you. Uh, You've done well there, I can't lie. You've put a Karen in her place. And yeah, like you said at the start of this story, when you said, um, you know, it's good to have a Karen encounter and not be left wondering later in the day, oh, you know, this is what I should have said. I should have done this differently. You know, when you have an argument or a discussion with someone and you think about it for hours afterwards, you're like, oh, I really wish I'd said this or this. It would have been way better. Well, luckily for you, you've done you've done well in the actual moment there. So no need to think about that, as you said at the start of the story. All three of you, I mean, all four of you, both the nice guys, the cashier and you have put this Karen right in her place because clearly her excuses about her kid being cranky, tired, whatever, were just a lie. They were behaving perfectly fine. It was all on this Karen. She was the one that was causing such a ruckus, being such an idiot. And yeah, you all told her what's up and she had to deal with the consequences. Amazing stuff. Entitled father goes ballistic for satanic music. Yesterday, I was out at a small coffee shop in my municipality in Sweden. I come here almost every day and have been for over 20 years. I work as an architect, and one of the ways I work best, building models and making drawings, the creative process, is by listening to music. Metal. Loud rock music. Just to give an indication of the type of music, at the time this happened, the songs I was listening to were The Devil and I, Slipknot, To Be Alone by Five Finger Death Punch, Babel's Tower by Primordial, and Numa by Tool. Now back to the story. The old lady who works at the store, we'll call her Eva, knows me very well, to the point where she is my order waiting for me when I get there. During Corona, Eva's coffee shop hasn't been doing too well, so I make sure to leave her generous tips, and on slower days for me, I even help her tidy up the place when there's nobody around. I usually sit at a window seat, perpendicular to the counter, facing out onto the road. There's a church directly across from the coffee shop, and nothing much else around besides residential houses. I'm sitting, drawing the church, eating my canel bull and drinking coffee when I see a dad and two small children, probably around eight or nine, come out of the church and into the coffee shop. Now, my town isn't a large place and Sweden isn't a very Christian country. I'm atheist, hence the devil's music. I don't recognize any of the three people. They don't look Swedish, maybe Mediterranean, and seem to get cold by just crossing the streets. 
They walk in, order their meal. I notice the kid's getting fussy. One of them stamps his foot, which is what got my attention. And I look up at Eva and smile at her. She deals with children a lot and likes them, unlike me, and is generally really sweet with them. Then I hear a shout. Being a 26-year-old man, I'm kind of protective of Eva because she is old and frail and I'm very well built. So I take off one side of my headphones to listen to what's going on. It's the entitled dad shouting. I want a discount on this cinnamon bun. I can't afford your absurd full price and I'm struggling. Think of Corona. My kids just want a dessert. Eva replies, I'm sorry, but I'm struggling just as much as you. I own a coffee shop in this small town. I don't care. I'm the one with little kids and I'm the one who has to support a full family on my own. Your husband is probably dead anyway. You're ancient. At this point, I take off my headphones, big no-no, and walk over to the guy. I'm 188 centimeters and he looks to be about 170 to 175. So I'm taller and stronger. I can tell he's a bit intimidated by my presence, but that is the point. My music is still playing, bigger no-no, as I ask him if there's a problem. He looks at me for a second. What's coming out of your headphones? The amazing guitar solo from my favorite song, To Be Alone. And your BS is making me miss it. What? We'll turn it off. He takes a step away from me and ushers his kids behind him. Why would I do that? I came over here to stop you from attacking Eva, not to get attacked myself. At this point, the entitled dad is still slowly moving away. Please, turn off that devil's song. I will, once you apologize to Eva. I'll call the police on you for being a missionary and a servant to Satan. Get away from me. I'm sorry, what? Then this guy actually pulls out his phone, types 911, and holds it out to me like it's a bomb ready to go off. I'm serious. In Sweden, he typed 911 into his phone. He has his kids behind him like he's protecting them from the unholy wrath of Satan or something. Yeah, I mean, I've just looked up the emergency number in Sweden, um, and it's 112, not 911. I'm not really sure what would happen if you called 911 in Sweden, to be honest. Um, I really want to find out now. Get away from me, he screams. Poor Eva was just kind of standing there, dumbfounded, looking at this grown man with two kids yell at me for having loud music in my headphones. Mind you, none of the songs I listed are anywhere close to doom or death metal. He then headbutted me and ran out of the door, leaving his kids in the coffee shop. I just stood there, looking between Eva and the kids, who've both started crying. Seconds later, before I can call 112, he came back with a giant golden cross, holding it out to me like I'm some sort of demon, shouting that I'd better get off of the mortal plane, yada yada yada, what is going on here? At this point, the situation's gone from this guy trying to get a discount on a cinnamon bun, to trying to exercise me. Eva and I can barely contain ourselves, because this isn't even scary, he's obviously on drugs and doesn't even look threatening. When nothing he's trying works, jumping up and down, shouting, etc, he just grabs his kids and leaves. After about a minute, Eva and I are laughing hard at this guy's absolute idiocy. Sometimes I wonder what comes over people to even be capable of this sort of thing. I guess, drugs? Anyway, that's all there is to it. I honestly wouldn't be too sure it's drugs to be honest because how irresponsible would you have to be to be with your kids and be high on drugs? I mean, maybe the actions kind of suggest that maybe this guy could be on something, but honestly, I reckon he was just, you know, kind of embarrassed at his actions and was caught out by you and probably felt threatened, intimidated and just went absolutely crazy, chucking a golden cross at you just because you're listening to heavy metal. Madness. I don't think you need drugs for that. I think you just need to be a bit of a mad dad. As I mentioned during the story though, I really want to know what happens if you call 911 when you're not in America. Do you still get through to 911 and they say, oh my god, what's happened? Are you okay? Uh, do you need medical assistance? Do you need the police? Anything? And you say, yeah, um, some guy's actually listening to satanic music. Um, it's called like heavy metal or something. It's totally against the law. And they say, oh my god, yeah, that does sound really illegal. Where are you? We'll come help you. Sweden. Yeah, we're on our way. Just going to get a, a cheeky eight hour, nine hour flight if that's all right with you, mate. Um, crazy. What's funny is that I actually went to Sweden not long ago, as most of you know, or some of you probably know, um, and they're lovely people. So to have, like, as in really, really lovely people. So to have foreigners or tourists come and do like stuff like this and act like this. God, yeah, I really wouldn't be a fan of that if I was a Swedish person, this situation. 
Now moving on to our second post. Drama Goblin finally gets told by a medical professional she needs mental help. I've written a handful of times about this particular entitled mum. She is notorious for being difficult. She refuses to clean her own house. She refuses to lift or play with her own children, claiming she is too weak. She has five of them. She won't watch them or really do much. She relies on her family and her poor husband to raise them. She recently went to the doctor, a one-time very short appointment, and swore she was diagnosed with complex partial seizures, claiming she was having seizures every five minutes. She said her brain was essentially rebooting over and over, and that was why she couldn't do anything adult-like. Now, I am skeptical because she had gone on her own and her husband didn't know what exactly the doctor said. After weeks of medication, this drama goblin still hasn't cleaned her house, let alone any of the other changes she swore were coming. She lies in bed and online shops all their money away. This can't be her fault. No, it must be in that the medicine isn't working. She goes back to the doctor and they give her a watch-like thing to wear for a bit. The device would track her seizures and alert her and them if she has a bad one. Drama Goblin is sure that her brain is rebooting and so there is no way to get her life together. Instead of trying, she starts hounding her husband to have another baby. That will fix everything. The last four did. Her husband doesn't want any more. He's overwhelmed with it all as is. She told him she doesn't care what he wants. I told him to go secretly get snipped. He won't, but he needs to. I'm sure I'll be making a Drama Goblin is Pregnant post soon. Anyway, on Drama Goblin's follow-up, her husband goes with her this time. He's concerned because of the things Drama Goblin has done or said. He showed the doctor some videos he had of her seizures. The doctor tells Drama Goblin that according to the device, she's not having seizures. Her brain isn't rebooting, that in her professional opinion, she believes Drama Goblin has some undiagnosed mental illness and referred her to a psychiatrist. She was firm, she was kind, but Drama Goblin flipped out and told her she was having seizures. This doctor obviously didn't know what she was talking about. She wanted to speak with her boss because of the way she was talking to her. The doctor pretty much told her to get a second opinion if she didn't believe her, but really pushed seeing someone and getting diagnosed properly. Drama Goblin is fuming. She refuses to contact any psychiatrist. She made an appointment for another doctor and a lawyer because she's convinced this doctor singled her out because she has a disability and can't do certain things. She drives me mad, but dang it if she isn't entertaining. Now for anyone wondering about my relationship with the Drama Goblin, as I've said, I've posted many times about her. I've explained. Long story short, she's my childhood best friend. We've grown apart. Before we did, she remarried and her husband and my dear husband ended up being besties. So even though I don't go out of my way to see or speak to her, she's constantly in my life. She's inescapable. She told me a version of what happened as soon as she got home. Her husband also told me what happened. I've known him years now and he's pretty no nonsense. I've never caught him lying or embellishing. She told me herself what the doctor told her, but she's convinced the doctor is a bully. She also told me that her husband and her are trying for another baby. When I asked her husband, he just broke down. All right, another very interesting story there. But in my opinion, this woman really isn't entitled at all. She just needs help. Like, look, I get it is fun to laugh at entitled people and react to them just being total idiots and stuff like that. But I really don't think this story is one of those one of those times, to be honest. I mean, it's clear that this woman is in a bad place mentally. And I think, you know, this story shows that people who have mental illnesses or mental issues need to be treated as best as possible and not made fun out of like this post is kind of doing like i do get it from op's perspective it's probably annoying having this person in your life and, and being annoying and horrible and not just going to the doctor like they so obviously need to do but there's a reason they're not going to the doctor it's probably because in their mind as you can see different stuff is happening to what really is going on in real life with them um yes it's obviously hard on her husband but her husband just wants the best for her you know she says she's his wife after all and he probably loves her i hope so anyway 
it's just a tough one. Like, I don't really want to laugh at this person. I want to be there for this person and say, look, please just help her get her to a psychiatrist so she can better her life and stop doing these crazy things. Because yes, it's clear that she's not entitled in my opinion. She just has severe mental issues. And that's something that she needs to be helped with, not really laughed at, if that makes sense. I don't know, maybe I'm going a bit too deep on that one. And maybe you guys disagree with me. Just my thoughts. Like, I don't really want to say, oh, you know, this person's horrible. You know, why doesn't her husband just lock up all her money, leave her, take the kids, don't have another kid? I don't think it's one of those stories, if you kind of get what I'm saying. It's more like, you know, we need to actually help this person. Clearly, something is wrong there. And, you know, let's all be aware and, and you know, get the help to the person that, that clearly needs it in this situation. I got out of the hospital and an entitled mum sent me right back. I just got out of the hospital for extensive knee surgery and walking out the door of the hospital reminded me of this story. A few important things to note. One, I have a severe allergy to cashews. It's bad enough that one one hundredth of one will kill me if I'm not treated properly and quickly. Nowadays, I always make sure to have an EpiPen on at all times, but when this story took place, I was a little more forgetful about it. I was nine, leave me alone, and I didn't always have it. Two, I have asthma, which can be a pretty lousy combination with anaphylaxis. Oh my god, yes, I can imagine. Three, at the time of this story, my dad was working for a company that treated him like garbage and wouldn't give him time off for anything except medical emergencies. And four, this story starts about four days before my 10th birthday. So a week before my birthday, my dad's boss told him he was going to San Francisco for work stuff. We lived in Denver at the time, which meant my dad was going to miss my birthday. It was upsetting, but I understood. And he said we'd have a party once he got back. While he was gone, my brother and I were staying with an entitled mum. At the time, we knew she was a little entitled, but my dad trusted her to take care of us. On day three of my dad's trip, my brother and I were playing in their living room when the entitled mum offered us some granola bars as a snack. At the time, I was young and wasn't very cautious, so I didn't always read ingredients for things I was eating. Unfortunately, there were cashews in the granola bar, so when I took the first bite, I started to feel it pretty quickly. Within minutes, I was throwing up everywhere in severe pain and my throat was closing up. And as if it couldn't get worse, that was when I realized I had forgotten my EpiPen. Then the panic and closing airways triggered an asthma attack, and I also didn't have my inhaler. So at that point, the entitled mum's cool boyfriend called an ambulance and I was just passed out on the floor. The paramedics were able to keep me from dying from the combination of the anaphylactic shock and my asthma attack, but I did end up slipping into a coma for 11 days. This meant I was in a coma on my birthday, but I guess that was probably pretty low on the list of concerns, considering they weren't 100% sure I was even going to make it out of the coma. So, a week after my birthday, I finally wake up. At first, I was fairly calm about waking up in a hospital, until I found out that I'd been in a coma for 11 days, at which point I started panicking and almost gave myself another asthma attack. Anyway, they kept me there for a few days just to make sure I was okay and that it was safe for me to go home. So we finally get home, and as soon as I walk in, I see my brother, my grandparents, my aunt, my uncle, my two cousins, the entitled mum, and another neighbour mum, and her kids, who my brother and I are good friends with, as well as a big sign that reads, Happy Birthday and Welcome Back to the Land of the Living. They had planned a surprise birthday party for me, once they found out I was out of the coma. So we went about doing birthday party things and hanging out. I got some questions from my brother and cousins about the coma, while the neighborhood mum bakes me a cake. However, the only important thing that was happening at this time was the following conversation between the entitled mum and the neighbor mum. The neighborhood mum said, man, that must have been terrifying for him to go into that coma. I mean, imagine having to be that careful about everything you eat. The entitled mum though replied, oh, don't tell me you buy all of that. What? Well, he was clearly faking it to get attention. Everyone knows that asthma and allergies aren't real. Both of those are very real and very serious problems. Whatever, you sheep are just too stupid to see through the government lies. Then the entitled mum just wandered off. I feel it's important to note that at this time, the birthday cake had just been put in the oven and this conversation happened in the living room, which did not have a line of sight into the kitchen. After a while, the cake finally finished baking and we all congregated in the dining room to eat it. So everyone sang happy birthday to me and my aunt cut the cake and gave everyone a slice. 
I was about to take the first bite when the luckiest thing that could have happened happened. I dropped my fork on the floor. At this point, I, wanting to act all grown up and solve my own problems, decided I'd go into the kitchen and clean the fork myself. Right as I finish and start walking back out to the dining room, I hear my dad yell, What the F did you just say? I run out to see what's going on and see my dad standing up, staring daggers at the entitled mum while she cowered in fear of him. It it was for his own good, the entitled mum whimpered. It turned out that after the conversation between the entitled mum and our neighbour mum, the entitled mum had snuck into the kitchen and poured most of a bag of mixed nuts that she had brought with her into the cake. My dad slammed his hand on the table. How the F is that for his own good? The entitled mum then starts to gain some confidence as she doesn't see a problem with what's happening. Well, if he had eaten the cake without knowing they were there, he wouldn't have been able to fake a reaction because he wouldn't have known that there was anything in the cake to react to. What the actual F is wrong with you? I was trying to prove to you sheep the allergy. I knew inviting you here was a mistake. I figured it was good for the boys to have you in their lives, but you've made it abundantly clear that it is not. So what are you saying? I'm saying get the frick out of my house and say the F away from my kids. You can't do that. They're my kids too. That's right, everyone. The entitled mum was my actual mum. Not after what you just pulled, they're not. And if you want to take this to court, I'll make sure that you aren't even allowed in the same state as them. Now, get the F out of my house before I call the cops. You just wait until my father hears about this. Now, my mum's dad is very wealthy, so I think she was expecting him to help her get custody of my brother and me. We found out later that not only did her boyfriend break up with her and kick her out of his house, but when her dad found out about what she did, he refused to let her live with him, stop giving her money, and said that if she took my dad to court, he would actually support my dad instead. As you can expect, she never took us to court. And as for the rest of the party, we just bought a new cake because nobody wanted to take the time to bake another one. We also decided to just throw out the pan we had used for the first one because she had put so many nuts in it that we were worried about it contaminating anything we put in after that. Holy heck, I mean, there are entitled parent stories and then there was this OP. I'm just glad, you know, overall that you're here to tell the tale because for a second there, I was genuinely quite worried for your health. I mean, you literally were in a coma for 11 days. That is how serious it can be. Now, don't get me wrong. If this had happened, it would have been a terrible, terrible experience. But thankfully, you know, you had your family around. I think you would have had an EpiPen, you know, if that, if, if the worst comes to the worst and you had taken that first bite of the cake, I think you probably would have been okay. It wouldn't have been as serious as the first time when you went to hospital for those 11 days, which is madness, by the way. But seriously, what is this entitled parent even? Th- how dumb can you be to think that like asthma isn't real for one? And then that nut allergies aren't real. Did she not know that you went? I mean, she did know. What am I talking about? She knew that you went into the into hospital and faked a coma. Imagine saying, what, you don't actually believe that OP was in a coma, do you? That was all made up. What do you think happened? The hospital was just like, oh, yeah, we'll let you uh, come and chill on this bed for 11 days. And yeah, we'll definitely, you know, corroborate your story to your entire family that you have a nut allergy. Like, what is going on here? What can this entire mum even think is happening? I don't know. She's mental. Send her away. Lock her up. I don't know, drown her? Screw it, just do anything. Now moving on to our second post. A female dog bridesmaid meets an unmovable force, my mother. Some quick background. My baby brother was born terminally ill and the long hospital stays and expensive meds kicked in around six months old. To cope with the huge medical bills, mum worked some odd jobs over the years, including making custom wedding and bridesmaids gowns. My mum had a few diehard rules. Number one, she did all of your measurements. I heard the lecture of vanity fibbing only results in a poorly fitting dress more times than I can count. Number two, all final fittings must be completed at least three weeks before the wedding. That way, if Dewey, my baby brother, had an emergency hospital stay, she'd have time to arrange for someone to sit with him while she went home to finish a job. He was non-verbal and needed a constant companion. This particular bride wanted all of her bridesmaids in pastel organza dresses. Organza is a gauzy fabric. The base dresses were white, covered with these colors. Unfortunately though, the bride had more bridesmaids than pastel shades the fabric came in, meaning one lucky bridesmaid wore tan. 
the bride refused to start a fight by assigning colors. So it was first come, first served. When you came for measurements, you got to pick from the remaining colors. One bridesmaid lived three hours away and flat out refused to come to town to be measured. She insisted that telling us she was a size A was good enough. Bridal sizes are very different and didn't cleanly convert, so that meant nothing. Mum finally reached a compromise that a local seamstress could measure her and send in the measurements. One month before this wedding, Dewey was admitted into the ICU to be placed on a ventilator. Mum now had to find coverage enough to get eight dresses finished off in the next two or so weeks. She pulled it off thanks to amazing friends, but it was tight. Dad was busy working overtime to pay the bills and dealing with us other two kids. Well, this female dog bridesmaid, BB from now on, still refused to have a final fitting more than two days before the wedding. She didn't want to waste a trip just because your mum was a horrible seamstress who didn't understand proper sizing. I was cleaning up seed pearls during that lovely conversation. My mum begged a friend to sit with Dewey for an entire day so she could do the fitting and adjustments all at once. Now on that day, this entitled bridesmaid was two hours late. When she arrived, she saw the hideous tan dress and began literally screaming about how it wasn't fair and my mum must have picked that colour. She demanded another bridesmaid return their dress and both dresses get swapped colours. It would have been another 20 plus hours of work so mum laughed and told her that was a big no the bride arrived and told her friend that color was the only option left and she was sorry but it was that or drop out of the wedding and pay for the dress anyways the entitled bridesmaid finally agreed to put it on yeah she lied about her size when the zipper didn't go all the way up mum whipped out the measuring tape only to discover this idiot has shaved one to two inches off every measurement except height. Her defense was that she wasn't going to let a jealous seamstress lie about her, so she fixed the numbers before passing them on. By this point, my mum was all but breathing fire. Her son's life hung in the balance, and this lunatic was making her life hell. My mum demanded double for the dress because she was now going to have to add strips of the base white dress to make it big enough and then make a whole new overdress from organza. It was doubling the time and adding substantially to fabric costs. The entitled bridesmaid fought over it and my mum finally told her, fine, pay me the agreed upon amount and take your dress as is. Now the bride herself was persuading the entitled bridesmaid into just paying up. She finally agreed to it and my mum told the bride to get the entire bridesmaid out of her house. They could come back in five hours to get the dress. Thankfully, the redone dress was a perfect fit. The entire bridesmaid paid the remaining balance and left after that. The day my brother died, my mum refused to ever make another wedding dress. She's only made one in the 21 years since, as a favour to the friend who spent that ill-fated day with Dewey in the ICU while mum fought with this entitled bridesmaid. Oh man, rest in peace, Dewey. That is such a sad end to that story. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. I thought that, you know, he'd be all right, but that's, ah, that is sad. I guess that is terminal illness for you. What can you do about that? Jesus, um, that is a sad end to the story. That's kind of like flummox me a little bit i'll be honest op uh yeah sorry to hear about your brother first and foremost that's that's absolutely truly horrible like seriously like, i do wonder sometimes why kids get terminal illnesses uh, who's doing that sort of stuff seriously it's a bit man it's a bit mental in my opinion um on the whole though in terms of this actual story and the entitled bridesmaid yeah like just I, I guess the moral is kind of think about what other people might be going through if you think oh this this dress is you know doesn't fit me it's not the right color it's you know too expensive those are all like really superficial things let's be realistic they don't actually matter in the grand scheme of life but then when you realize that the person you know putting all this work into making your dress as good as it can possibly be has a dying son who she's now not able to spend time with because you're overworking her and asking her for more stuff on top of the stuff that you've paid for wow puts into perspective doesn't it i guess just like try and consider i'm saying this to myself by the way i'm not just preaching this i'm saying like you know i need to think about this try and think about other people's you know needs before yours a lot of the time as well or you know just in conjunction with yours and just try and understand other people's motives and you know needs in life and what could possibly be going on with someone else so pretty much when you think that your dress for your upcoming wedding looks bad and is the wrong color and doesn't fit you properly they might have a terminally ill child puts into perspective doesn't it my parents threatened to take away my door because i don't want one of our dogs sleeping in my room 
so as the title says my parents just threatened to take away my door I went upstairs to take my meds and get my dog for bedtime My mum wanted me to take our smallest and most annoying dog to bed with me I politely declined and said that I would rather not she insisted and I declined again It only escalated from there She doesn't want him sleeping with her and my stepdad because the dog touches her all night I don't want him sleeping with me because he keeps me awake and wakes me up in the middle of the night Something he doesn't do with them. I've told them before but they don't care They said that if I don't take him They'll take my door while i'm at my dad's and throw it out so that I can't have it back I have severe anxiety tons of mental illnesses on both sides of the family and my privacy is what keeps me sane They know this and still threatened to take my door This story actually reminds me a little bit of a post I saw back in the day on r slash insane parents where an insane parent had literally axed down their their child's door. I don't really know why. Although we're not really there yet at this story, it feels like we're getting pretty close. I mean, seriously, taking the door down of your child's bedroom, that's got to be like the biggest no in terms of privacy, in terms of ethics, in terms of everything. Why would you ever do... It's mental unless your daughter literally said yes I will sleep with this dog in my bed every day and then she was going against it But I mean even then axing or not axing but maybe eventually axing slash taking the door down of your child so So messed up so messed up now moving on to our next post entitled starbucks woman and the straw I was at a starbucks this week and while waiting to pick up my order I saw an entitled woman berate the baristas for not putting a straw in her drink. If you haven't been to a Starbucks in the last few years, they've switched to paper straws for cold drinks. On top of that, they recently replaced traditional lids with straw holes in the middle with lids that have a small opening for sipping. So the woman said, could I have a straw? The barista replied, sure, we're out of the smaller straws, but would you like a large one? Yes. Now this lady couldn't shove a straw into the sipping hole partly because her long fake nails were in the way and partly because she didn't think about squeezing the straw it is doable but it's more difficult than plastic she ended up spilling some of her drink onto the counter so agitated she asks do you have smaller ones as if the barista didn't just tell her that they were out i'm sorry but that's all we have the woman shoved the drink and straw back to the barista you do it Excuse me? I can't put it in. Do it for me. I'm sorry, but I can't touch it. You know, due to the pandemic, it seems as though that was obvious, but nope, not to this entitled idiot. Seriously, where has she been for the last year? <sighs> well, what am I supposed to do? I can't drink it like this. You can drink it through the lid, or you can take the lid off to use the straw. I can give you another one. Now, to a reasonable person, these are reasonable options. But this subreddit is entitled parents after all. I want to use the straw normally. I want your manager now. Holy heck, that escalated quickly. I missed the bulk of her conversation with the manager, who offered the same options and also offered to remake the woman's drink. I'm not entirely sure how that would solve her straw problem, but whatever. Fortunately, she, the manager, was adamant that they could not and would not handle her drink or her straw. Eventually, though, the woman stormed out. This is ridiculous. I don't want you to make another drink. This is the worst service. Um, there's nothing wrong with their service. Your attitude, on the other hand, was the worst. The stupid entitled woman ended up leaving her full drink on top of the trash can outside. All because she didn't want to, or know how to, drink without a straw. On the plus side, at least she wasted her money. Yeah, uh, another very strange story there, not gonna lie. I mean, personally, I do enjoy drinking out of straw. I mean, this is what I drink out of, like, most days, if you wanted to know. Um, But say the straw wasn't working, for example, on this bottle. Well, what I would do is this. A pretty incredible see i mean did you know that was possible to drink without a straw i didn't until i read this story and op said you can drink without a straw amazing scenes um i don't get it why could you not just take the lid off and drink it i just don't get it now moving on to our third story entitled neighbor arranged the re-adoption of our dog without our knowledge 
So, 14 years ago, when I was 10 years old, we moved from London to a farmhouse in the country. Along with us came our family dog, Jasper, who passed last year, but would have been only a year old at the time. Our new neighbors were a typical lovely farmer couple with a small dog called Bonnie, who instantly became friends with Jasper. So the as of yet not entitled neighbor starts taking Jasper along on his dog walks around the fields. And of course we let him. Moving on a couple years, and long story short, the neighbor got a pet cat who died and then put down Bonnie, as he was apparently too sad to live without the cat. Without a dog of his own anymore, the neighbor had become fixated on Jasper, often whistling for him whenever the neighbor went on his evening walks. And still, we let it happen, because Jasper had a lot of energy and walks were always a good idea for him. A few months later, and my family had decided to move to France. I go ahead with my mum while my dad and my sister stay in England for a while longer so she can finish her GCSE exams. A few weeks before my dad officially joins us, he drives down Jasper to France and drops him off before heading back to England alone. Now for the juicy part. My dad is working in his office, a barn across the street, when he hears the now entitled neighbour whistling for my dog. Jasper, where are you? He says. My dad replied, he's not here. What do you mean? At this point, our neighbor actually goes into our house looking for our dog. What are you doing? My dad asks. Well, I know you're moving, so I called a friend and they said they'd adopt Jasper. I'm here to take him to them. Now, where is he? You can't have him. He's in France. You're lying. Give him to me. It went on like this for a bit and my entitled neighbor was genuinely shocked that we had taken our family dog with us when we moved house and country and that he couldn't give him to a friend of his. As an aside, this same man once came into our chicken coop and crushed all the eggs of one of our brooding hens because we had too many chickens. We only had like 10 to 15. I thought my mother was actually going to kill him after this. Well, if I didn't think your neighbor was strange enough after the bulk of that story, um, <laughs> after hearing about the chickens, I certainly do. I mean, fair enough if you if you have some sort of affinity to a neighbor's dog and you lost your own dog and, you know, you love animals and you want to just, like, take care of this dog. But first of all, he wasn't even going to take care of it. He was going to give it to a mate. And second of all, why would you go into a chicken coop and break eggs because you have too many chicken? Again, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's not often that I'm short for words, but I'm absolutely baffled by these three stories I've read so far. Any explanation as to why someone would want to crush chicken eggs for no real reason? Please let me know down below in the comments. Enlighten me. Oh, and whilst you're there, drop a like on the video as well. Right, let's get on to our final story. Entitled mum tries to get me to open access gate for her gets yelled at by daughter my brother and i just moved to a gated community so i can be closer to my job and because it was far safer in order to get in you have to do one of two things one have a window access sticker that scans and opens the gates two or put in a special code in the code box that calls the resident and then they can press the button to let you in an important thing to note is that there's two entrances to this community. One, the main entrance, is just a pair of gates that slowly swing open and close when the code is put in or your window sticker is scanned. The other, the private entrance, not only has the gate but also a barrier arm, like what you see at areas with restricted access that lowers right behind a car so nobody can tailgate you. Since we're still waiting for our access stickers to arrive, my brother and I have to use our own codes to call our cell phones so we can punch in the number to let us in. A pain in the butt, but it's a huge improvement over the community we left behind. Normally, I take the private entrance because it's right by my house. But on this particular day, I had to use the main entrance so I could pick up a package that had been dropped off at the office, which isn't far away from the main entrance. Well, I get to the call box and just as I'm about to punch in my number, a beat up blue Subaru whipped around the corner and went right up to the gate. Said Subaru belongs to my neighbor's mother. Let's call this entitled mum Linda. And she has a bad habit of hanging by the sticker access port and waiting for someone to buzz her in. Because of how slow the main gate opens and closes, it's not unusual for more than one car to just buzz right behind someone with an access sticker. I'll admit, I've done it a few times myself, but it's an unwritten rule that you don't block the access ports and just wait for someone to use the call box. Anyway, Linda has never liked my brother and me for whatever reason, and I know she's waiting for me to call and let her in. So I decided to have some fun at her expense. 
I noticed I was a little too far away to safely reach the call box, so I backed up. Nobody was behind me and pulled closer to the box so I could reach it without having to open my car door. Then, instead of punching in my own code, I looked up my name alphabetically, taking my sweet time pressing the scrolling button. My last name begins with an A, so for extra funsies, I pressed the Z button and took my time scrolling up. Meanwhile, I'm watching for other cars who might be turning in so I could punch in the code and let them in. Yeah, it would mean letting Linda in, but I'm not going to ruin a whole bunch of other people's days because I wanted a little petty revenge, am I? But thankfully, no cars came in, which is good, because Linda begins honking her horn and gesturing angrily at me through her window. I was just about at my name when she leaned out her window and screamed, Gringa estupida, open the gate now! Now, I may not know a lot of Spanish, but hearing her call me that made me stop all thoughts of petty revenge. I'm sorry, I'm at the wrong place, I shouted. I put the car in drive, did a hairpin turn that would have made a NASCAR driver drool, and peeled out of there to the private entrance. Now, I thought that that would be the end of my encounter with Linda. Oh boy, was I wrong. I get in through the private entrance, pick up my package, and 10 minutes later, I'm pulled into my driveway, when Victoria, my neighbor, and the entitled mum's daughter comes out to get her mail. We greet each other and chat for a few minutes about our days. I didn't tell her about her mother, not wanting to sour her mood, as she's aware of her mother's behavior and is just as irritated as everyone else who's had to put up with Linda. Well, wouldn't you know it, here comes Linda's Subaru. Linda pulls in and gets out. She sees me and points to me. Thanks to you, I'm late for dinner with my daughter and grandchildren. Victoria looks at me, confused. I shrug my shoulders, not in the mood to fight, and said, I was going to let you in until you called me a gringa estupida. Victoria flipped out. She ran up to her mother, who was a lot smaller than her, and starts screaming at her in Spanish. I can tell that whatever Victoria said was bad because right away, Linda was looking like a beaten down dog, embarrassed out of her wits. Eventually, Victoria yelled at her mother, pointing at the exit, and I heard, sal de aquí, which means get out of here. Linda got in her car and drove off. Victoria apologized to me profusely. I told her it wasn't her fault and thanked her for standing up for me. Needless to say, Linda hasn't been over lately and I don't think she will be until she learns some manners. Yeah, I mean, I've got to say, well done to Victoria for standing up against her own entitled parent. I haven't seen that that often. I mean, I read a lot of entitled parent stories and genuinely, that's got to be one of the few times that I've seen a kid stand up to their entitled parent. It takes quite a lot of courage, to be fair, to stand up in that situation. But as as you've seen, clearly Victoria has a lot of power over Linda as she just shut her right down. Linda immediately cowered away and got embarrassed, rightly, because she probably knew in her heart of hearts that she was being an absolute idiot in this situation. But yeah, none of that would have happened without Victoria. So I rate Victoria highly. Long live the queen. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this one. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you watched the entire thing and listened to the entire thing, then you know what? I actually just might love you. Who knows? Love's a strong word and I admit that. But so is watching three hours of my content. What can I say? I feel like we've got something special going on if you're still watching and listening. I'll see you very shortly with another episode. But you are truly very loved.